Hey, hi, oh, the dare yo, oh, the glory of the day. Come on, what's some Viking chants, man? Some Viking songs, some Viking musics. Gotta get in the Viking mood. <laughs> All right, we, uh, we going live here. What's going on over here? What's going on over here? Oh, we got ads. Look at that. The tube said, hey, BC, we're going to work with you today, bruh. <laughs> well, at least it'll be crack our coffee. Hold on. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. What's going on over there? There's a lot of storms coming in over there. Hey. There's everybody. Malachi up there. Salute, B. Salute right back to you. My my man, my right hand man, JR9 Gaming. What up, BC? What up, JR9? Demonte Ty Drew. I got some gold card channel members up in here, deep. Pile driver finisher. You the one, bro. <laughs> what up, Kevin MD, man? As I'm looking at the live chat, super chat just popped up. Kevin MD, gold status. Say, I'm going to say it loud, Kevin MD. Yeah. You're damn right, Jer9 Gaming. Seven months, the very first ever channel member, guys. JR9 says, if Dom wins the title tonight, it's pathetic. Under no circumstance can an NXT reign, which has gone on since October, end on a random Tuesday to a main roster talent. Uh, exclamation point, bro. I can't even fathom they would do that, though, right? Unless that's exactly what H would want. Show up to the main roster. Show up to Monday Night Raw with the NXT title. Damien's got a briefcase. Rhea's got a women's championship. Balor's going for a world title. It could be, JR9. Eric Leno, seven-month membership. I think, like, my fifth or sixth unit member, correct? Something like Eric Leno says, yeah, <laughs> appreciate it, man. I got my LA night unit in full force. We got to be pushing for him, man. We hope to be live for the good, the bad, and the ugly, man. First of all, we got to get him into the title match. Who's to say he's going to win that Friday? Let me take these uh, headphones off, guys. You, playback sounds pretty damn good. Let me know if anything occurs throughout the stream, static-wise, sound-wise. We have storms coming in, but I broke out a mic that can deal with that much better, too. The crackling and all that. So I'm going to put my earbuds in so I can hear myself get amplified, if you don't mind. Um, there were some super thankses over the last two podcast that were put up i was out in the world a lot of traveling a lot of business to conduct i wasn't able to get to those super thanks i will get to them when i go over the super chats later in this review this is the amped up podcast with bc amplify for tuesday the 18th of july featuring july 17th edition of monday night raw they had it all they had pirate viking ships that's right, a wrestling match on a Viking ship. They had Becky Lynch's pajamas, Cody Rhodes' mama saying F you to Brock. Um, we had title changes. Chelsea Green, Sonia Deville. Um, a lot of us like Chelsea Green, and Sonia Deville's been working her ass off for several years now. So a lot of people are happy to see certain aspects of this. When you think of Chelsea Green and Sony as your tag title holders, of course, a lot of the community is saying, damn it, Vince, it makes no sense. An hour after that match, it's up on, uh, I believe, Sonya's social now. Maybe it's Chelsea's. There's Paul 3H's Levesque with that picture, and he's got a big smile, and he's got his fingers at each Chelsea and Sonya. So, no, it's a Paul Levesque decision. Cut the shit. Please stop with this Vince McMahon narrative. If there's a cloud in the sky, it's not Vince's fault. It's pouring out. There's thunderstorms right now in the area as I'm going live. It could screw up the stream a little bit. I'm not going to blame Vincent Kennedy McMahon. If you get a flat tire on your way to work or the way to get your coffee, it's not Vince McMahon's fault. 
If AEW sucks Wednesday night, it's not Vince McMahon's fault. Yes, yes, we blame him for a lot. For over five years, we've been ripping Vince McMahon apart for justified reasons. But he's not the reason for every issue in the world. And he's no longer got 100% of a threshold on Raw and SmackDown. I'm sorry if you can't comprehend that. Paul Levesque has been producing, creating, or lack thereof, a lot of these shows in the last several months. He has more power than ever before. If you truly know how to critique pro wrestling and you follow the trajectory of McMahon and Triple H, you know which is which. And I've seen a lot of Paul Levesque that has been really bad, actually. And you could easily think, oh, that was Vince. But no, it was Paul Levesque. Big decisions. The Austin Theory shit was Paul Levesque. Cody losing at Mania? Paul Levesque. Cody having nothing ever since? Paul Levesque. So whether you like what happened with the tag titles last night or not, we'll talk about it. That's Paul Levesque. The pitcher was immediately taken afterwards. He got the big smile. Doesn't look like somebody who's tied up in the back. And Vince McMahon is spanking his ass, saying, you're gonna, you're gonna do what I say. I'm gonna rip up every script you give me. And if I'm not in the arena, I'm gonna have my fingerprints all over the show. That's right, my fingerprints. Maybe three or four, maybe all of my fingerprints. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work remotely. I'm gonna remotely change the show, pal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remotely change it all, you doofus son-in-law. And what are you gonna do? Are you gonna cry to my idiotic daughter? Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna cry? Come on, he didn't look like somebody who's fucking crying. He doesn't look like somebody who's in such shambles. He doesn't look like somebody who's going to war with Vince over creative. The guy is smiling, making fucking millions, and he refuses to walk away from the power. He is right there with his schnoz up Vince's ass. If you don't want to believe it, tough for you, dog. I don't know what to tell you. I'm over here in Smartville. Do you know what we drink in Smartville? Ice cold Dunkin' Coffees. And if we want a nice, hot, extra, extra Dunkin' Coffee, it's sizzling, piping hot. That's what we do in Smartville. In Smartville, we kick our feet up at the pool. Maybe a martini in the right hand, maybe a margarita in the left hand. Who knows? But in Smartville, we enjoy all the pleasantries of being smart. Meanwhile, some of this community... Fucking Vince, my shit took so long this morning. I went to the supermarket. They're all out of my Cheerios. Fucking Vince. The hatred for Vince is at a creepy, bizarre, pathetic level. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! With your fucking Vince McMahon narratives, you dumb nuts! You fucking fuck nuts dumb shits! Ah! Oh, Vince McMahon! Vince McMahon is the reason my mom divorced my father! Vince McMahon is the reason little Sparky got hit by a car last night! I love that cat! Oh. And people gonna cry, but no, I hear what you're saying, BC, but Vince still has 100% control. Triple H just doesn't ha have any control, BC. It would be better if he did, BC, but he doesn't, BC. I, I think it's all Vince, BC, but once we get rid of Vince, BC, Triple H could give us black and gold back, BC. I want black and gold, BC. I was on another channel, BC, and we were talking about how awesome Triple H is, and we want black and gold. We want black and gold, BC. Can we get some black and gold, Bayfly? I like black and I like gold. I want black and gold, Bayfly. Can we? How can we get rid of Vince? Fucking Vince? Nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. Balor and Sethington had a really good backstage segment last night. H is being praised. Wow, that looks like it's an H segment, man. Fucking minutes later, there's a pirate ship on the fucking constructed as part of the ring, and Vikings are having a Viking match. Which is it? 
Well, it's clear to see. I mean, some of this is Vince. Some of this is... You can't just say everything good, H, everything bad, Vince. It doesn't work that way. You're letting him off the hook with the Austin Theory shit, the Cody shit. This whole Brockton and Cody shit from day one has been Paul Levesque. Because you can tell the beatdowns is what happened in black and gold. And there's no purpose to the story. This car doesn't have an engine. The car doesn't have an engine. But we let him off the hook. Well, okay, that's Paul. But we're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a pass because I mean he gave us black and gold. He's got some creativity. Guy's broken down. He's in a hospital fucking bed with a heart issue. He's wearing glasses now. He's got wrinkles on top of wrinkles. He's already told you he doesn't know how to control these fucking shows. The third hour is a complete mystery to Paul Levesque. He has admitted that. The second hour, he falls off the fucking rails. You don't know who's going to croak first. You think it's Vince McMahon. You don't know if it's going to be Paul Levesque. This dude is in shambles, a shell of what he once was. I don't take pride in saying that. I used to do the fucking spritzy dude. Remember, we would drink our water and we would spritz like him, right? <laughs> right, and the fucking lights would be on it, and he'd be spritzing. Yeah, man, Hunter Hearst Helmsley's fucking Triple H character. I take no pride in saying that Triple H is a shell of what he once was and he cannot handle five hours of television every fucking week. I don't take pride in that. You think I take pride in that? I don't take pride in that. Sign guy, you think I take pride in that? No. Hey, Mach. Mach, you think I take pride in that? No, BC. You don't take no pride, brother. No pride at all. You are right, Mach. I take no pride in that. I take no pride in that. Now, that being said, now that we all are on the same page here, get that to a fucking hundred, too. That should be in triple digits right now, those ups. Get that to a fight. There's anybody not amplified right now. We're just being bitch boy Bradens. We're fucking just ninja watching. We're like, mm, I don't know about this BZ. I'm going to watch every minute, though, because he's really captivating. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be a part of a unit. I might go back to Fightful, man. I might go back to watch Simon and what culture. There you go. There you go. Over a bill now. That's what I'm talking about. On here, we tell the truth. We stay amplified. There's no bullshit here. I spent three hours in the gym today. In real life, I'm snapping people in half. In real life, I'm ripping their fucking heads off their fucking shoulders and throwing it against brick walls. On the interweb machine, oh, the boogeyman's here. The real badass in the world. In the world. I make them cry. I make them cry IRL. I make them cry virtually. I am the Amplified Man. And we make them cry. We make them cry. But what I did not have is my fourth coffee of the morning, right? It's already 11 a.m. I haven't had my fourth coffee of the morning. Let me crack this. Now, what I am going to say, let's bring it back down, man. BC scares grown men, says Sir Char. Man, grown men cry. They fucking cry. And I don't blame them. When I'm walking in that Starbucks, you better run or I'm putting you through the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's usually those scrawny little fucking punks too, you know what I mean? They've never seen a day in the fucking gym. Oh, I'm going to talk shit, man. Uh, never mind my scrawny little dingly arms. I'm going to fuck you, man. Fuck you, dude. Yeah, yeah, how can I fucking rip your fucking... Huh? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, BC's pumped. That's what happens when I do three hours in the gym and I down a coffee right after. And now we're going to do another one, because now we got the Monday Night Raw review. Oh, we won't get amped if we weren't already, I assure you. Woo! Good morning, Brianna! Brianna just got in, says good morning. What's up, Brianna? You are catching an amplified B motherfucking C. Amplified as shit, Stephen Harris. What up, dude? With everybody saying Joker, L.A. Night. Yeah. Adam, you go get that coffee, bro. No doubt, brother. Hey, 
Eric Leno, Sir Charles, and uh, Pile Driver Finisher, The Pain. These are just some of the gold card members I'm seeing up in the chat right now, my channel members. What up, dudes? Hold on, where'd I just see that too, by the way? Dwayne Piazza is a six-month member. BC, last night's show was a big botch. I'm going to tell you something, Dwayne Piazza. It's probably not good. It's going to be a hot take. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, whoa, what was in that last coffee, BC? You're probably already saying that, judging by how amplified BC is. William F., welcome to the unit. New channel member, William F., during that cold open, BC just going absolute batshit ballistic, which is what I love to do. Um, William F. is a new channel member, gold status club member. Um, he's not new to the channel by far. William F. is one of my tried and trues for a very long time. Dante Jiren 23, what's up, brother? Gold status. Uh, William F., I appreciate you, brother, even before you earned your gold card just now. Um, always one of my favorite people on the channel, William F., a lot of super chats came in. Evidently, I amplified you guys, or you guys were already amplified. A lot of super chats. I'm going to get to those at the end of this very uh, podcast, I assure you. Sheriff Rivers, welcome to the AMP Unit Gold. Sheriff Rivers was already a gold member, by the way. Um, a little bit of issues, I'm guessing, but welcome back, Sheriff Rivers. You have your gold card back, brother. Um, trying to trying to welcome everybody in. There's a lot of supers we're gonna go over for sure. There was a banger bomb I got to get over to too. I saw that. Sir Charles seven month membership. BC is the mayor of Smartville, brother. The mayor, the governor, the the damn president of Smartville. But I love having the residents of Smartville. And you know what's cool? I already know most of them. They're amplified unit members. In fact, from here on out, the only residents that can live in Smartville is amplified unit members. Bottom line. So, Sir Charles, absolutely Smartville. That's the only way you're gonna reside. Nobody else is allowed in Smartville. It's a gated community because we're better than you. We are better than you. We're better than you. We are better than you. We wear $4,000 watches because we're better than you. Our team is 28-time champions because we're better than you. Or at least we're going to be 20. We, we think optimistically, right? The 28 is already a foregone conclusion. We are better than you, and you know it. Or you just found out, idiots. You fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun. I'm having too much fun. Life is great, brother. Life is fun. It's fun when you're amplified. It's fun. You see, what happens today is nobody's having fun anymore. Man, everybody's all down in the dumps. The world is caving in. Well, I mean, there's a lot of shittiness. Cars no longer have engines. They have batteries. Dudes are wearing skinny pants. and I don't even know what is a fucking chicken what is a girl a fucking uh, a dude these days actually i don't think they know what they are so they keep flip-flopping i feel bad for all the single peeps out there in the world man uh, you, you gotta fucking keep track of the teams you know what i mean one false move and you're accidentally going over to you gotta be careful of that shit it's a weird world what are we talking about what are we talking oh yeah the world going to shit no 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 it's what you make out of it Go out there, whoop the world's ass, make mucho dinero, rock it out amplified style, and call it a day. Get up early, eat your fucking Wheaties, drink your coffee, hit the gym, and do it all again. Okay, if anybody came here for a Raw review, that's what you're gonna get, alright? Hey, Big Nang, six-month membership. BC, Timmy and Joey want to reside in Smartville, too. Stupid question. Are they qualified? First of all, six-month membership. Big Nang, salute to that, brother. As far as Timmy and Joey, fuck off. 
Fuck off, Timmy, and fuck off, Joey. But 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 Beasley, my ma said I can live uh, over in the Smartville for two weeks before I have to come back home. I don't give a fuck what your mama said. You belong nowhere near Smartville. Go listen to Simon. See what was up and what was down. Go listen to Fightful's latest reports. Go anywhere else but Smartville. Cause you ain't gonna be let in. Bye bye. Big Nang. That's an automatic no, obviously. You ain't getting in the gated community of Smartville. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. You kidding me? Anyway, Monday Night Raw. Now, this is going to be a hot take, I believe. All right? Hot take central here, man. I thought the show overall, even if it was bad, all right? You know, this is going, this is going, this is going to fucking flip a lot of you guys out here. You ready for this? I thought the show overall, <laughs> hear me out, man. I'm telling the truth. I'm not even joking here. Was entertaining. I did. Overall, I at least... I didn't come anywhere near falling asleep. I didn't feel necessarily that it was such a chore. There was a lot of outrageous, straight, bunker shit that is WWE. And a lot of the reason I fell in love with it in the first place. There was things that absolutely had no business being done. No question. But there was some good, but more than that, entertaining. Oh, I know, I know, BC, you're going to have to go over this review and explain this, man. How do you figure? I'll let you know. But I'll tell you this in the cold open. I will say this. They spread it out, right? The Cody thing with the teasing of Brockton's music, you start the brawl backstage, you come back in. Okay, that's one thing. Ronda Rousey up in the fucking, uh, the hidden level of the nosebleeds. I don't know where she found that hidden level, but she found a level beyond the nosebleeds. She's way up there, and she's having her promo with Shayna Baszler. Pretty fucking cool. Finn Balor and Sethington backstage was just phenomenal. It was pretty fucking cool. And we don't have to listen to Sethington's... Uh, <laughs> ...for 27 minutes. We didn't have to listen to that. Now, the crowd afterwards, I believe he was in a dark segment, but we didn't have to listen to that. We saw him in Balor backstage. Pretty fucking cool. All right, we'll take that shit. Um, the beatdown, actually, with Raquel and Rhea, as stupid and forced as this is, because it doesn't make sense, I'll let you know exactly what I mean when I get to that part of the review. But there's no... There's no... There's not reasoning to it. But it was done really well. And it's the same thing with Cody and Brock. Could you imagine if there was purpose? Could you imagine if there was a real level of suspense? And people want to see this. It could actually be something special. Unfortunately, that's lacking. But they spread out the show a lot. You even had some decent wrestling. Main event was really good. It's sad that Seth... I almost said Seth Zane. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens have been reduced to weird Monday Night Raw main events since they've won the fucking titles. They just feel like afterthoughts. Last night, at least it wasn't a six-man or an eight-man tag. They're not tagging up with Cody or Sethington or Scooter McStevenson. No. They were in a straight tag match with the Judgment Day. This is not the first time they were in a six-man tag with them recently. They were just in a tag match with them. They just switched out components. Last night was Dum Dum and Damien. But a really good tag match. Um, so, oddly, and I don't know how. I haven't reviewed. I have not went over the notes since. Uh, we're going to find out right now. Um, how I found this as a whole at large, how I found this entertaining to say the least. 
We're going to find out. Maybe I was off my rocker last night. It's BC Amplified. Extremely possible. Maybe I go over these notes and I come to the realization I didn't have a clue what the fuck I was talking about last night. This show sucked. Maybe I say that. But when it went off the air, I was pretty entertained. Was it a good show? Hold off. Let's not get carried away. Let's find out together. Swig of coffee. Super chats keep rocking him. And now I see two banger bombs up there. I, the, the, the pitch looks like Stegmeister. I'll have to click on the bigger screen. That looks like Stegmeister. And who's the other one? Is that like Jane Donnelly? That is Ash Steg, Meister, Steggles, and Jane Donnelly with 50 spot banger bombs. Guys, I want to get, it's been a, it's been a war over 25 minutes. I want to get into this, but I'm going to spend some time on those banger bombs for sure, brah. Stegmeister and Jane Donnelly, man, always showing not just the support, not just channel members, amp unit gold status. But they throw fucking banger bombs. That's like a bunch of coffees at the channel all in one power punch. And then you wonder why BC's disamplified. Well, you can blame people like Stegmeister and Jane Donnelly. (laughs) You open the fry, you got thousand coffees in your fridge. You ain't even got to go out and get a coffee. Dante Jaren 23. I got you, brother. I saw that. Seven month milestone membership. That means when we started this channel membership seven months ago, Dante Jaren 23. It's Vince's fault. I've been amplified. I've had a me- amplified membership for seven months. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna give Dante Jaren amplified gold status. It was, it was me all along. Dante Jaren 23. Salute, brother. Appreciate the channel membership, guys. Over 150 on the ups in that cold open. I don't even know how much wrestling we actually talk. We just had a lot of fun. Shoot the shit. Get amplified, right? Scare human beings. I get it. It's what we do. Um, there's storms in the area. This might break up. I don't know about the mic. The pitcher might break up. For instance, my the, what I'm seeing right now is a little blurry. Um, there's storms, guys. As long as you can hear BC, that's all I really care about. Um, so hopefully this will uh, this will clear up pitcher wise and storm wise. But. Hoping we don't get booted off the stream because of the weather. So we're going to jump right into this. BC is going to take a swig of this Dunkin' Iced Coffee original. And then we're going to go into the start of Monday Night Raw, 7-17-23. Monday Night Raw starts off with Cody Rhodes calling out Brockton Lesnar. Now it's the home of Cody Rhodes, Atlanta, Georgia. So he's even got family. Um, Front row. Mama Cody is in the uh, front row. Brockton teases coming out. His music plays, right? Before you get to the... Right? You go... What is it? The beginning, right? Before it hits into the fucking beat, you go... Right? Is that pretty good? Is that a good... Is that a good... uh, (laughs) <laughs> How do you start Brock's fucking mute? How do you describe it? <laughs> so Brockton does this a few times, right? He's obviously, get, you know, you got fucking Kevin Dunn's doing it, but uh, Brockton is having it done, right? You like the thing storyline-wise that Kevin Dunn is upside down over a toilet and he's about to get a swirly from Brockton if he doesn't play the music. So we do that a couple of times. Cody Rhodes finally has enough. He darts through the curtain, and all of a sudden, we wait a few seconds. We hang on camera B, and we hang on the curtain, and we see a steel chair fly out of the curtain. Then all of a sudden, we see Cody Rhodes fly out of the curtain, and then here comes Brockton Lesnar. Brockton beats the shit out of him, takes him in front of his mama in front of the front row, F5s Cody Rhodes in front of Mama Rhodes, And there's Mama Cody literally saying, You suck, Brockton! And Brock just, Brock is trying to hold back laughter. Brock is trying to hold back laughter, man. You got this little old Mama, Mama Cody. You suck! 
fuck, Brockton? And Brockton's like, oh man, if I could F5 you, motherfucker. <laughs> so he takes, uh, first of all, he hits that Kaborta, uh, that, that Clyde, what was it? The, uh, he got the arm lock, is what he did on Cody first. Could have snapped his arm, but didn't. Brought him into the ring, and then he locked in. He locked in the Kimura again, I believe, inside the ring. That's what happened. I didn't have the whole thing in my notes. I'm going on recollection here. He locked it in. The Kimura was locked again in the ring, so he did it twice, guys. And both times, he could have snapped his arm, but he did not. So he's toying with him a little bit, and then he gets the mic, and he says, I'll see you at in Motor City, bitch. Or was that Ronda who said that? They both cut the same type of promo afterwards. We'll get to Ronda later. I think he may have said, I'll see you at SummerSlam, bitch. And then Ronda later says Motor City, bitch, to Shayna. We'll go over that. But listen, I thought this was well done. If we had a reason to give a flying fuck, I don't even care if it's flying at this point. It could be a fucking driving fuck, right? It could be a commuting fuck, like they're on the train, right? The train goes by and you're like, whoa, is that fuck? Yes. It could be a flying fuck, a commuting fuck, a driving fuck, a scootering fuck. If we gave one fuck, that's all I would ask for. But because there was never a purpose to this story, there's no story. It's Brockton beating up Cody, and Cody says, I can't go on unless I put Brockton in the rear view. So that's what we're doing, man. Some of the, the beatdowns have been okay. The problem is that's all we're seeing. Brockton only shows up a few weeks out of the month, too, if you're lucky. So when he's there, you got to just do beatdown segments. So... Point is, man, th you got two more Raws left. You, uh, the beatdowns have to stop. Now it's just time. We've already seen them in the ring twice before. We've seen seven different beatdowns, and we still don't have a purpose to the story. But there's worse ways to start the show, let me tell you guys, man. So um, this was no harm, no foul. We're getting Cody and Brockton rubber match, match number three at SummerSlam. All right. I don't know what it served purpose-wise. I don't know if you got any more excited about it. Guys, Brock beat up Cody again. And then he grabbed the mic, said some words, and left. We've already seen Cody get his ass whooped by Brock before. We've seen bigger beatdowns than what we saw last night. So that's what I mean. Does it serve purpose? No. Does it have a purpose, this whole story, yet? Still no. Is there worse ways to start Raw? Yes. Cody is so good at telling stories. It's a shame. It's ironic that him and Brock don't have one because he's so good at it. And again, last night, he just tells a story on the microphone about being from Atlanta and having his family front row. That's it. And you're captivated by his words. The Brockton teasing with his music, I thought was a nice touch. That's what I mean about creativity. You ain't got to move mountains. Just do little things and we'll at least look at it as passable. Just do the little things, bro. We're not asking you to move mountains. That was the start of Monday Night Raw. Amplified unit. How'd you like the start of Raw? Did you like it? Yes or no? Yes or no? It, it's Eye of the Beholder, man. BC's kind of 50-50, but it could have went either way. At least I wasn't asleep at the end of the first segment. And at least it was semi, and I do mean bare minimum, entertaining. Yes or no in the chat. Segment number one. If you did see Raw, I know a lot of you guys say, BC, I only watch you, bro. I don't watch the shows. I listen to your reviews. If you shit on it completely, I know I didn't miss anything. If you say some parts were actually good, I make it a point to go back and watch. But if you guys did watch the show, you guys, at best, I'm seeing in the chat, okay. It was okay at best. 50-50 says Blitz. I'm seeing a lot of OKs. JR9 just says indifferent. Probably the best way to, des to describe it. Kind of 50-50 down the middle. Take it or leave it status. Well, I'm looking at the chat too. Uh, Robert Hurt, six-month membership. Robert Hurt, appreciate you, brother. Gold status for six months. Channel membership, the highest level of support you could possibly show the channel. 
Robert Hurst says, BC, so glad to be here. In all honesty, do you think Cody wins a world title? First of all, again, Robert Hurst, thank you, brother. I shine that gold card every fucking morning, man. You're, you're a resident of Smartville, Robert Hurt. <laughs> that gold card gets you into Smartville. <laughs> um, Cody winning. You, you know what's sad is that everybody honestly believed Paul Levesque's bullshit when he said there's more story to tell. And, um... And uh, everyone is, everyone's like, yeah, WrestleMania 40, Philadelphia, that's where Cody's going to get it. Guys, don't be so sure. You know what I've heard in the last few weeks alone? I've heard people say that Jey Uso needs to win the title at SummerSlam. I've heard people say, no, it's got to be Solo Sokoa. Solo beating Roman. Are you kidding me? I'm already hearing people, and you know, that's my dude right now in pro wrestling. L.A. Knight. Yeah. There's people saying if he keeps collecting this white hot lightning in a bottle, if that keeps going, how do you not give it to L.A. Knight eventually? And we don't know how this L.A. Knight ride is going to go. They may have to like they had to put it on Daniel Bryan at 30. My point is this. I wouldn't be so sure. That's many, many, many months away, man. So then what are you talking about? Sethington's paper championship? The runners-up participation trophy? Does Cody really want that shit? I don't know, Robert Hurt. Uh, it's not looking good. The problem that I have is even if he cross paths with Roman at WrestleMania 40, you will never get the moment that we had at 39. It will never be like that ever again. That's the sad part. Yeah, Blitz, intro wasn't bad, but like you said, we need a reason. That's the thing, Blitz, you know what I mean? There, there, there can still be good segments, and we can call it, right? And on th These reviews were always going to be fair. My shtick isn't just a bash WWE, believe it or not. Or AEW when I'm talking AEW. My shtick isn't to bash it. I bash it because it literally a lot of it still sucks and needs to be corrected. We're trying to help. A lot of us grew up in many air eras of pro wrestling. We know. <laughs> we know what works and doesn't. And we know what's simplistic. Little changes that need to be made. So we can call out something good, but if it doesn't serve a purpose, it's not really doing anything going forward. And that's what happened with Cody and Brock last night. Nobody can watch that and go, fuck, now I have to get SummerSlam. Now I have to. I have to find a way to have mom and dad buy the pay-per-view. Or at least get one month free membership of the Peacock. Who's doing that after, after fucking Cody getting beat up by Brock a little bit more last night? So a lot of good answers in the chat, guys. Uh, I appreciate it because I want to know how you guys felt about the start of Raw because things were about to get interesting going forward. Gunther is up next. I see champion Gunther. He defeats Scooter McStevenson. That's right. He got a name. He changes now. I don't know. He used to be fucking Scooter McGee. People were making fun of him or something. I don't know, man. Their name. People are always going to talk shit. As long as they got your name in their mouth, that's all that matters. <laughs> as long as it ain't the other way around, pay no attention to those that speak foul on you. They want to be you. They want what you got. Let them speak and then laugh at them while simultaneously feeling sorry for them because you're better than them. But he let it get to him. He changed his name to Scooter McStevenson. So Scooter McStevenson, he does lose. Matthew P.H. Riddle, he does lose via the Gunther Bomb. Scooter McStevenson looking up at the McLights. Post-match, Gunther stands atop the commentary table and says, You can boo me all you want, but it won't change the fact that tonight is the greatest night in your pathetic lives. That was great. Gunther was really good, man. You think he's just good in the ring? He can rock that mic, too. Because you got to see the ring general, he says. And then he challenges Drew Snoozentire, and we all have respect for Drew McIntyre. But the way they brought him back in the UK, tagging up with Matthew P.H. Riddle, Scooter McStevenson, 
and going right back for the IC title, that's a snooze fest. Nobody can truly be excited about that. We already saw that at WrestleMania. It was even better. They had Sheamus in there and they were chopping each other's dome pieces off. The guy goes away for months to come back just for the same IC title. And what are you going to do, guys? Can we play a game of what are you going to do? Because Drew McIntyre, is he, he's the one, that, all of this for Gunther, the whole Gunther title reign was to give it to Drew McIntyre? What does that do for Drew? We've seen Drew with a world title, guys. <laughs> Drew was winning a world title at WrestleMania. They didn't know what to do with him. He was boring. And I can't even blame him fully. Booking botch, they didn't know what to do with him. So now you're going to give him a mid-card title, and that's going to be something even better? I don't see how Drew McIntyre should even be rummaging around with Gunther. He should be a heel. He should have turned heel in the UK after the monster pop. He should have turned monster heel and started down the path of Sethington Rollins. That could have been a fun SummerSlam match. Instead, you're getting Balor and Sethington for the 17th time. In fact, you just saw it at Money in the Bank. Second grandest stage of their calendar year, and you're getting rematches. Meanwhile, Drew McIntyre is going for a mid-card title. So as much as we all appreciate and respect Drewby Snoozentire, what does this do for Drewby? What's it going to do? Are you going to be more excited now that he's coming down with a fancy title on his shoulder? Or maybe it's around his kilt. Or maybe it's wrapped around his sword, Angela. Or maybe he comes down to the ring on a fucking horse. Harold the horse. And Harold has the fucking title around his neck. Who knows what they do with Drewby? But how is that going to excite you? I'm thinking ahead, guys. It's going to be about as much fun as Austin Theory holding the U.S. title. How's that been going the last seven fucking months? Don't even lie and try to say it's been exciting, Basley. It's doing wonders for Austin, Basley. They're still piping in booze. They still don't care. We have to stop putting the titles on people that are not going to do anything with the fucking titles. And it's not going to change a damn thing. I'm the only one in the community going to tell you this. I understand. Doesn't make me wrong. It makes me oh so right. We have to stop this putting the title in weird situations. Titles used to mean something back in the day. They were prestigious. They went on people that you could see months in advance. Yes, that's where the title should be. It would elevate everybody. I always say the title doesn't necessarily make the person, the wrestler. The wrestler is going to make the title, but they work hand in hand. If you're doing it correctly, everything should be elevated from a championship on a champion. <sighs> Man, BC's over here dropping fucking straight facts, dog. Whatever you guys do for a, a living, a profession, and, and this is BC's fucking hobby. I already know I own it in everything else I do. But you ever know when you just feel, you just got it, you know? You, you, you're just, you're the top of what you do. Man, BC, every time I cut these fucking podcasts, I know I'm the top of the game, bro. I am the top of what I do. There is literally, there's not a Denise Salcedo, a fucking a Simon, there's not a Sean Ross, there is not a JD, there is nobody that can top a BC. Man, you just got that it factor. And you just know you're rocking this fucking game. Nobody drops facts like this shit. The cream always rises to the top. Yeah. That's the truth. But no, we sit here and we nerd out. With the journalists and reporters and podcasters and content creators. We nerd out, right? The title needs to go to Drew. Jay Uso has to win the title at SummerSlam. We're not even thinking about what it does in the process. Jay wins the title, then what? What? Goes on to a solo feud. 
You have this tag team guy with the world. All of this three years of Roman Reigns as champion. In Montreal, Sami Zayn couldn't even get the job done. At WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes couldn't even get the job done. Champion versus champion, Big E didn't get the job done. But Jason Uso. And Jason and Jimmy Uso, that's my favorite tag team, by the way, the Usos. So that's not no shade to them. Much love and respect. I'm so glad they're in the position they are. But look at what they're fighting over. Roman threw the title to the, to the ground last Friday night. They were fighting more for that red tribal lay, right? They want to see who is the true tribal chief or who should be. Who's best for the family at the top of the helm. They're fighting over that red tribal lay more than the championship. So why would you waste a championship title change after a thousand plus days on Jason Uso? If Drew was already world title, won it at WrestleMania, and it didn't do jack shit, why would you give him Gunther's title? <sighs> so? So, what do you... What do you, what are you gonna... What do you, what do you want? You want Drew to take it from Gunther? Then what? Then what do you want? You, uh, is he gonna get a better reaction? Is Gunther going to go, hey, what I say? Take his food again, and you ain't going to be eating for another three hours. Coda! Dogs fighting over each other's food. I got amplified dogs. The shepherd likes to eat all the food. It's good to be back. I've been going on, uh, on some business travels, man. It's always good to see the dogs when you come back, but they're ready to fucking take heads off. My, my dog, you got to be careful where you're walking because they'll take heads off. Uh, anyway, you good? Don't look at him like that either. Any fighting, I'll stop the stream immediately. Anyway, what are you going to do? Drew winning the title is as good as one of my German shepherds winning the championship. It's not going to do anything. So... You know, I, I, I just hope people just calm it down, right? We'll have a good match, hopefully, all right? We already know this because we've seen it before. We've seen Sheamus involved, and it, it was even better. No, Drew winning the championship is not going to do anything for Drew, and that's the truth. Can we just stop, man? Stop. Everybody shouldn't have a title. No. Every time we like somebody or we have respect, they have to get a title. <sighs> I said that about LA Knight. I wasn't here talking about world titles or even US titles until he lost the money in the bank briefcase. But I said, okay, with his momentum, put the briefcase on him. And then you can sit on it for a year. Did I not? JR9 and everybody in this chat that watches this channel faithfully, did I not say... Put the fucking briefcase, sit on it for a year if you got it. I don't give a fuck. But that's entertaining. That's fun for the crowd when it's somebody who's super over with that briefcase. And we are not throwing a, ch a championship on him. No, I didn't say put a title on, uh, uh, on LA Knight yet. Now they botched. So now you better take that fucking title off of Austin at SummerSlam and it better be LA Knight. But I didn't say that. I said the briefcase is a perfect scenario where you just set somebody up perfectly. And over the next fucking year, tease the shit. That's fine. LA Knight doesn't need a title right now. And he's fucking super over. No, the problem that we have in pro wrestling today is we put titles or prestigious accessories. We put them on people that they have no business being on. We respect them. So we say, it's okay. And Drew gets a world title at Mania when we didn't even think, well, wait a second, they're not going to book him properly. And sure enough, it was a miserably snooze fest of a championship reign. Damian Priest, we respect him. He's a long ways away from being over. Nobody is going, oh, Monday Night Raw's on tonight. Gotta see Damian Priest. Nobody. So by throwing a briefcase on him, you're saying what? That's how he's going to get over? No. You have to start the process of getting over first, and then you should reap the rewards. 
Right? Stone Cold Steve Austin was already starting to get over. Then he won the King of the Ring. I've said this several times in recent weeks. When Triple H was was being punished because of the whole click situation. They needed somebody. It wasn't going to go to Savio Vega or Jake the Snake Roberts. He was already getting over. So you said, okay, let's take him to the next level. Damien is nowhere near there. So what the fuck is the briefcase doing? LA Knight was getting over. Now you take him to the next level with the briefcase, just like King of the Ring would have done for Stone Cold. King of the Ring for Stone Cold took him to the next level so he could go for the IC title and world title. Why would you not give LA Knight the same proper booking? It's botched. Robert Coleman, JJ Bulldog, you're welcome. Flip Flip, Eric Leno, Pimpe Seuss, I appreciate the truth bombs. I really do. Because it's good to know that people are thinking logically. It's not just BC. It, 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 if it's sitting in your lap, why fight it? Money in the bank, king of the ring, things like that are used for the person that is already getting over and you help them go to the next level. You just don't throw it on individuals that you hope will get over because of the king of the ring. Yeah, put on this robe, put on this crown, carry around the scepter, act like a king. You'll get over. Paul Levesque says, uh, here, uh, we're going to put the briefcase on Damien because we really want Judgment Day to be super over and we want Damien Priest to hoist this up and everybody know that he's the guy. No, what happens? Damien puts it up and nobody gives a fuck. And this is somebody who, who, Damien Priest is one of the coolest dudes in the world. One of the nicest dudes you can come across. Nothing but respect to Damien. I want the best for him. I really do. This is not about that. It's about right and wrong decisions. Money in the bank to Damien Priest, and we already, not even a full month after Money in the Bank, and we're already bored, bored of him teasing it and walking around with it. So, while the rest of the wrestling world is saying it's gotta go on Drew, no, I am not having Gunther after this whole, when did Gunther win the IC title? How long has he been carrying this, guys? Uh, JR9 Gaming. Or anybody in the chat that knows, how long has Gunther been champion? Before I move on to the backstage segment that happened next in hour number one. Uh, while I'm waiting for that answer, 200 plus have smashed that up and remain amplified with BC. I truly appreciate that. Let's get that to 250 and beyond. So if you haven't yet, we're not Bitch Boy Bradens on this channel. We don't bullshit. Three hours in the gym. Now we're doing at least an hour to two hour of a stream for Monday Night Raw. And then I got to go out in the world and kick some fucking ass business wise. So we're amplified. Smash that. I appreciate the 200 of you guys that have already done such. F I'm getting four and 500 days. Somebody's wrong. That's a hundred day difference, guys. JR9 says he's 40 days away from the longest reigning IC title holder. Well, right there, they love records. So I doubt he's going to lose anyway because of that. Thank you for telling me that, JR9. And I think that's a record that, yeah, we should actually see come to fruition because I don't think Drew should be taking the title anyway. So I'm going to go with 400 days, man. Somebody said exactly 402 days. Um, JB, I believe, said that with Ray Hunt. So, okay, let's just say 400 days over a year. And Drew McIntyre. Guys, I'm thinking long term. If this actually did wonders for Drew McIntyre, okay. I.E., right? In example, go back to his title victory, world title victory at WrestleMania. Tell me what happened afterwards. Tell me if you gave a fuck. Tell me if it helped out Drew in any way. And now we're going to replay this. We're going to run it back with a fucking mid-card title? Man, if that's the best you had for a year-plus reign for Gunther. All right, whatever, man. I just hope you don't get your way when it comes to fruition at SummerSlam. When it's all said and done, the smoke settles, the dust clears. I hope Gunther's walking out with that title. And that's with nothing but respect to Drewby Snooze Entire. Christopher, what up, brother? Gold team. Gold team, Christopher. 
403 days, says Christopher, too, by the way. Strict Tango. Strict Tango in the chat. Where's your gold card after your name, bro? I thought you were a gold team member. D did you lose the membership? Or were you just never? I know you're a you're, uh, strict tango is one of my tried and trues. I'm surprised not to see a gold card. Actually, it does cost. I could do it. If times are tough, then, then don't even answer. I, I totally hear that, man. Trust me. BC came from projects, bro. I was getting reduced lunch. I got free lunch. You know how embarrassing that is when you're a kid? You, you go up what it is. I have no problem telling the story now because now I'm wearing fucking fancy schmancy watches and shit. And uh, I'm doing a lot of business around the world and making damn good money, man. And in my hobby, man, I got you guys respecting the shit out of this channel. But uh, back in the day, times were so tough that you would have to, your parents would file for some like uh, reduced lunch or free lunch. And you would go in and every Monday morning, a lunch lady would come to the classroom and she would give you five red tickets, a red ticket for every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And each red ticket you would give to the lunch lady at, at the cafeteria when it's lunchtime and you would get a free lunch. So basically, I think there was only one maybe other kid besides me in the classroom that got the tickets. So it was an easy way to see who was fucking dirt poor. <laughs> and there's BC getting up, man. I'm like, ah, fuck. And I was so bad with them, bro. D Mondays were always like hot dog or pizza day. So I would spend all five in the first day. Tuesday through Friday, times were tough. But uh, yeah, man, that's a little bit of a uh, struggle in adversity, man. Um... I, I don't know if it's different in your areas, guys. That's how uh, lunch programs worked uh, when I was younger. This was a while back in the day, though. But free lunch tickets. I remember one year, whoa, we might have broken a tax bracket. We may have gotten out of poverty by a fucking minuscule. And uh, I didn't qualify for free. I qualified for reduced. So for 40 cents, I could eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny, bro. I, I don't I don't look at times like that in in a negative way, man. It makes you who you are, you know. Um interesting. Well, I don't know what the fuck brought me back on that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If if you can't be a, a gold card member because times are just rough, dude, you don't have to worry about it. I, I always remember my my red team go every fucking amplified unit member that's been with BC for a while and has been respectful, even in disagreement, respectful. I always remember um, every, basically every amplified unit member that's that's been respectable and with BC for uh, a, a long time. Um, Oh, strict tango, sort of a uh, financial difficulty. So, oh, so couldn't join in the first place. I got you, Strick. Struggle in adversity, strict tango. Hey, hopefully one day I get to see a gold card after your name, brother, because I know you're always up on the channel, man. Sometimes one of the first ones, too. So, uh, much respect. Santivia Major, James Shrimp Fajitas. Ray Hunt, Jonathan S. I got a lot of new gold card members that have joined since we went live. A. Merrick, Sadiqua Flowers. What's up, everybody? Eric Newton, six-month membership. Eric Newton, salute, brother. Appreciate you, dude. Anthony Boley, seven-month membership right from the jump. We've had membership for seven months. Hey, BC in the AMP unit, currently working but dropping by to show some love and respect. Anthony Boley, that's what we run on, bro. On this chat, you know how BC works. I do not, I pay zero attention to negativity or shit talkers. All of my attention will go to positive reactions, positive reviews, positive statements. <laughs> I'm joking. You see the irony on that? Because Beasley, you're so negative on the reviews, man. It's a joke. I always get called so negative. But uh, Anthony Boley, man, I appreciate you, man. Showing love and respect, but at work. That's what I mean, man. If you respectfully disagree... That's that's fine. You know what I mean? It, it, it's it's it, there's a fine line. You know that's what makes the amplified unit the very fucking best, man. You guys know how to fucking handle yourselves. 
We know when to put our feelings aside, and we know when we need to talk talk about the truth, the facts. That's the only way we're going to make this shit better, bro. So I appreciate that, man. The respect you guys show the channel, same I show back to you, man. But I always, in all honesty, though, even though I made a joke, I really do only focus on um, all of the respect, all of the... The Amplified Unit members that know that we have something to take care of on this channel, and that's make pro wrestling great again. Make pro wrestling great again. That is what we're doing. And sometimes people don't want to... James Shrimp Fajitas, no crybabies allowed. I mean, that's what it is, you know? There's people that literally cry, man. Basically, uh, they cry about it, man. They, they, they literally... My wrestling views, my wrestling reviews make them cry. They get so irritated. They're, they're, they're so pissed off. That's music to my ears, by the way. That means I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. If, if, if the shows aren't going to entertain you, BC's going to. <laughs> but when BC is talked about more than the actual show, you know rent-free. Rent-free. And it's a beautiful fucking thing when you can accomplish that. When you're so good at what you do that they're all going to say that name. B. C. Amplify. Yeah. Man, man, this level of respect, man. I, I love seeing this. DC Lanner's up in here with five-month membership. I might hit SummerSlam this year here in Detroit. I'm not too excited, but I can't miss Trish. <laughs> Hashtag make pro wrestling great again, uh, DC Lanyer. It might be a hot take. It might not be what people want to hear, but I love Trish Stratus. She's awesome at what she does. DC Lanyer, man. Appreciate you, brah. JJ Bulldog. BC loves when people don't agree with him. I, I wouldn't say that necessarily because I do have so much truth that needs to be dropped. So I actually prefer when people, when we are all in lockstep so we can move on to the next topics at hand to try to make this better. But it's the stupidity I, I just can't deal with, right? It's the stupid, it's not even disagreeing, it's stupidity. It's got no basis for a fact to even be declared or attached to it. That's what I cannot stand. The disagreeing always makes me laugh because I'm dropping nothing but truth. It's not an opinion a lot of what I talk about. So it's always interesting when I get, basically, I disagree, man. Okay, what do you want? A fucking cookie? Do you want fucking clouds to shit rainbow fucking sprinkled Sundays? I don't know what you want from me. You disagree. That's your fucking problem. That's, that's, that's what, maybe that happens in Stupidville. I don't know. It doesn't happen in Smartville. Ooh, I tell ya. Anyway, there's been a lot of supers up in here, man. A lot of uh, celebrations, man, of uh, months and, and milestones for channel memberships. Jamal Strake and six-month membership. BC, keep doing what you're doing. Always appreciate your videos. Also, why does H bother bringing Brock? Why does H bothering bringing Brock? Was he copying the Cody MJF seg? Oh, maybe Jamal. I don't know what why he does most of what it, Triple H. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I do know. I appreciate your membership, brother. Always good to see your name up in here. Uh, Jamal. And you know we're going to keep rocking out on this channel, brother, better than anybody could even possibly do it. It's not even close. It's not even close, man. I appreciate it. I got Renee G on a six-month membership. Renee G gold status. I know I got Eric Newton as well. Man, a lot of milestones today, man. I hope I'm getting everybody's milestone, guys. All right, we got to move on because we're, here we are. We're over an hour. I'm still in hour number one of this review. So now after Gunther defeats Scooter McStevenson, Matthew P.H. Riddle via Gunther Bomb, and then challenges Drew Mack and Snooze and Tyre for SummerSlam, we then go backstage where Smiles Santana, 
aka Raquel Rodriguez, and Liv Mia Morgan are cutting an interview. Mamma Mia, because wow, is Liv Morgan so damn fine. So Rhea Ripley steps up, okay? Rhea Ripley knocks down Mamma Mia Morgan with a headbutt and then starts brawling with Smile Santana. Now, this is one of those WWE feuds that has literally no purpose, like Cody Rhodes and Brockton Lesnar. Right? There's no there's no feud because we don't have a purpose for the story. A story without a plot is not a story at all. Just like Cody and Brockton, this makes zero sense. Listen to this, guys. Rhea Ripley said for two weeks, don't get in our business. Right? That's what Rhea said. Let me get a swig because we have to talk honesty. Because maybe I'm missing something. And I truly, I'm not even, I'm not even being sarcastic. Somebody needs to tell me if I missed something here. Hold on. Okay, so Rhea Ripley has for two weeks now said stay out of our business to Smiles Santana, Raquel Rodriguez, and Mama Mia Morgan. Two straight weeks. Re Rodriguez, Smiles Santana, did nothing, right? For two, okay, but there, there's been no interaction, basically. And then she comes up again last night and she says some more shit to Smile Santana. So what you're telling me is they literally... You're telling them to stay out of your business. They haven't gotten into it. They literally have stayed out of your business. So you, if you're feeling like this is rushed and nonsensical for SummerSlam, Rhea versus Smile Santana, it's because it is rushed. It is nonsensical. In the last two weeks, what was the interaction with Smile Santana and Rhea Ripley, guys? Honestly, tell me. James Shrimp Fajitas, no sense at all, but, but I'm, I'm really, because I just must have missed a segment. It happens. I'm in my notes. I have to take a quick business call. I have to fucking, uh, I have to rip the dogs apart from one another. Who knows? There's times where I miss a few, uh, a few moments of a segment. What happened in the last two weeks? It makes no sense, William F. No. JR9, Rhea has interrupted Raquel backstage. Yeah, that was it. Rhea has been walking up to Smile Santana and saying, stop getting in our business. And Raquel's like, okay, was never in it. <laughs> I think there was one thing that happened because they were setting this up, and then that was it. And then, Ra and then Rhea walks up to Smile Santana and Mama Mia Morgan again last night. It doesn't make sense. You told them to stay out of your business. All right. Just had to clarify. Because I was serious. I didn't know. It felt like the last two weeks, Rio was the one instigating the fight. And Smile Santana is just like, uh, uh okay. <laughs> All right. It, it just doesn't. It's SummerSlam. Even if you're the biggest Smile Santana, Raquel Rodriguez fan, or the biggest Rhea Ripley fan. It's the second biggest event, the second grandest stage of WWE's calendar year. Smile Santana versus Rhea Ripley is not the match. It should be. In the future, if you built Raquel up correctly over time, and she is the beast versus Rhea the beast, that could be actually a good match. But if you're rushing it with literally no story, they're, they're forcing a story that Raquel is getting in Rhea's business and she's not even in her business. And in two weeks is SummerSlam. Do you guys realize that it's two weeks from Saturday, I believe, correct? 29, Corey Graves is like, three weeks from Saturday. I'm like, no dipshit. It's two weeks from Saturday. Cluster fuck Corey. He doesn't know his days. I don't blame him. Two weeks from Saturday is SummerSlam, and, and we're, we're getting this weird Smile Santana versus Rhea Ripley shit. It, it just doesn't make sense. None. And it's really refreshing to see 
everybody in the chat just going, wait, it doesn't make sense. Because I really thought I missed something the last two weeks. So I was like, literally clarify for me. It's not disagreeing. It's not being rude. You're literally saying, actually, BC, Smile Santana did get in her business the last two weeks. No, she didn't. She didn't. Judgment Day is now middle of the ring in the next segment. KO and Sami Zayn hit the top of the ramp and they make their match for later in the night for the titles. Hour number two, Smile Santana and Mama Mia Morgan versus Chelsea Green. It's Chelsea! Why does she do... What is that that ring introduction? <laughs> She's like, Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green! <laughs> Chelsea Green! I'm like, what is she doing that voice for, bro? So Sonya and Chelsea Green are out there. Sonya Deville! And Chelsea Green! <laughs> oh, we have too much fun on this shit, bro. Anyway, tag titles are on the line earlier in the night in the, in the, in the brawl because Smile Santana and Rhea Ripley ended up having a brawl backstage. Uh, the leg of Raquel went out, uh, was blown out. And then WWE did a segment where they're running a sloppy shop, right? Like Adam Pierce is like, well, what's the, the status, Doc? And Doc's like, well, I won't totally not clear her, but I really advise her not going out there. And Pierce is like, well, if you really want to, I'll sanction the match. So there they go. The tag titles are on the line. And right there, you're thinking, well, wait a second. There's probably going to be new champions. Like, would they really do this in the middle of a Monday Night Raw? T change hands with the titles to pe people that like like w you wouldn't even like why are they champions you would question that first and then you go no this is WWE that's exactly what they would do they would stuff it in the middle of the show they'll just have random people win the titles and that's ex that's their MO for 10 years that's what they've done so you start to think is Paul 3 H Schnazbegi Pinocchio Pussface Doofus Son-in-Law is he really going to put the titles on Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville? Is, 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 is this dude really going to put the titles on them in Paul Levesque? The answer was yes. Guys, tag titles on the line. Deville and Green become new women's tag team champion <laughs> champions i know a lot of you guys don't watch the show you just tune in to bc's review much respect much love and appreciation to you guys man uh to, to trust me there's so many people you could be watching you choose to watch bc amplified for these reviews uh utmost respect right back to you um I'm not lying. I'm not I'm not doing a joke. Earlier I joked a little bit on certain things. I'm not joking. Chelsea Green, Sonia Deville win the championships. If you're keeping track at home, okay? Or or trying to anyway, there has now been that makes six different title changes this year alone. We just got into our seventh month of the calendar year. Six six different uh, six different title changes and, and in the process, two vacancies. There's been two vacancies wrapped around the six title changes. So let's just take the two vacancies and call that a, a, a title reign, right? If you just, let's make it simple. Two vacancies, let's make that a seventh title reign, right? Seven different sets of champions. You basically have a new set of champions every month this year. That's what you have. We're in our seventh month. There's been six title changes and two vacancies. Let's call that an even seven for seven. Every month, there's a new set of champions. That's why the titles can't seem prestigious. First of all, you have a division that is non-existent. Secondly, your titles cannot even be viewed as prestigious because we're just playing hot potato. We're giving these titles away like it's Halloween candy. Ding dong! You open the fucking door, there's Timmy and Jerry dressed up like ketchup and mustard. I am ketchup and I am mustard. We are condiments. We want to be on your weenies. And they're like, just take the fucking Hershey's. You take the Kit Kats and here's a mounds to just go away. 
They're handing this shit out like it's fucking Halloween candy. They're championships. Championships. Damage control. Becky Lynch and Lita. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Raquel and Liv, two separate times. And before we even got into the year, Raquel and Aaliyah. Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville. Listen to these names that have held these fucking these tag titles, guys. Peyton Royce, Billy Kay. Oh, I could it. Tamina Snuka. Nia Jax. Aaliyah. Chelsea Green. That's not even shade. I'm saying listen to these names. Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Tamina, Nia, Aaliyah, Chelsea. And there's still people that question why Sasha Banks and Naomi walked away from that division and that company subsequently. You fucking honestly wonder why Sasha Banks and Naomi said, what the fuck are we doing? We're losing the titles to Peyton Royce and Billy Kay at WrestleMania? Aaliyah is coming right in and winning this fucking title that we were supposed to make prestigious? Tamina? Nia? And there's still people that go, they were unprofessional for leaving. You, you, you see the story with Eric Young. He walked away because he didn't want to work with Vince McMahon, supposedly. And everybody is giving Eric Young a pat on the back. Good job for standing up for yourself, bud. But when it's the ladies like Sasha and Naomi, they get vilified for it, right? They're total villains. They're, they get called unprofessional for not wanting to go along with the old bastard in Stanford's booking. They're unprofessional. They should have just showed up to work. But Eric Young does it. Whoa, congratulations, buddy. When Paul Levesque refuses to do what Eric Young did and Sasha and Naomi, we all give him a pass. Uh, his hands are tied. He can't stand up to him, man. As much as we're giving an applause to Eric Young, we're giving Paul 3H's Levesque a pass. He's not going to walk out, BC. What are you saying? What the fuck? Why would he? He's not going to walk out. Why not? Vince McMahon's own son walked out three times. Stephanie McMahon walked out. Shane went and started his own company. Linda McMahon walked out four times. What is holding Paul Levesque to this company? Chat, I want to I want to fucking do this right now live. In the chat, what is holding Paul Levesque in WWE? Why are we giving him a pass? Why can he not walk away right now as a multi-millionaire, as a 50-something-year-old man? Why can he not stand up for himself and walk away? Why? Somebody in the chat, don't even say contract. Stephanie, Shane, Linda, all under contract. Talent and others, and they walked right out. Don't even say contract. Stephanie's purse. That's a good. Uh, uh, that's a good fucking answer, actually, uh, pile driver, because he's got to get his balls first, which are in Stephanie's purse. Exactly. Power. Joker. JJ. Power. Eddie Brash. Power. Malachi. Power hungry. Pride says Dante Jiren twenty three. Pride. Power. Yeah. And I'm, I'm. I'm not even being sarcastic. If anybody has a real reason why he's not walking away, let me know now. Because I'm sick and tired of everybody giving this guy a pass when they just praised Eric Young. Why is Paul Levesque, if he's being shitted on, if he just cannot get this control over creative, if he supposedly went to war recently with Vince McMahon and they had an intervention, why is he there? Why is he doing smiley pictures with the new champions, Chelsea and Sonia, last night? Like that was all his call. Power and greed, Trina Scott. Cosmic power. Like He-Man, I have the power, JJ. JR9 Gaming, Vince's own kids have walked out, but Triple H can't for some damn reason. No balls, Paul the Ripper King.
Power and Greed, Darren. Rachel S. Greed. Jonathan S. Because of his position, he won't leave because he doesn't want to lose his position. Exactly. That's my point. Power and greed. Right? CEOs. Walt Disney World has had CEOs walk the fuck away from those multi-million dollar deals on top of the Disney bubble world. And they walked away. Corporate. Oh, man. If you, if you just knew on Wall Street here in New York how many fucking CEOs and high power, high profile multi-millionaire dudes walk away because something just ain't right. They don't feel they're being respected. They think they can do better and they bank and bet on themselves. But WWE's Paul Levesque, McMahon, he refuses. Exactly correct. He refuses to leave, and there's little pockets in this community that give him a pass. Poor Paul. Poor Paul. He's making all these millions of dollars, and he's attached to the greatest of powers in WWE, this poor guy. And then they create these stupid, stupid, Stupid false fucking stories, right? Like, there's an intervention with Vince. Paul Levesque McMahon had a meeting with Vince. There's a war between Triple H McMahon and Vince McMahon. The guy is literally in pictures last night smiling over his creative decisions. True story. After Chelsea and Sonya won the match, they posted a photo. And, and, and fucking H is there with a big grin. Everybody thought that was a Vince decision, right? Because it's Chelsea and Sonya out of nowhere in the middle of a Monday Night Raw. And Triple H is just like, yeah. Oh, well, oh, well, basically, I mean, it's against it. Of course, he's going to take the picture. It's what he does, basically. But, I mean, Vince is sitting there with a baseball bat behind the camera. And he's like, if you don't smile in this picture, ah, oh, to one of your legs, buddy. What? And he truly doesn't have the balls to walk out if that is the case. What, what are you saying to me? You're just saying he's an enabler. And we just say, uh, yeah, Joker. It's Vince's fault. He's working remotely. Silver Black 31 BC, you already told the timeline how 3H has rose to power. It's, f it's par for his course. Yeah, and that's why I'm not going to do it again. I've done it a thousand times. If you guys have listened to past podcasts, I've laid out his entire career. This is what he does. He attaches himself to power. He's not leaving. He's not doing a Stephanie or a Shane or a Linda. He is staying right the fuck there. And if you think he's actually going to war and having interventions and having arguments with Vince, it's not happening. You don't know H. 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 <laughs> you don't know the fucking dude. That's him. It's par for the course. So for those that thought this was a Vince decision, no, it was Paul. Paul took the big picture, big smile on his face afterwards, put the titles on him. And people fucking blame Sasha Banks and Naomi for walking away. Guys, this is not even disrespect to, to uh, uh, Chelsea Green, by the way. She is such a good heel talent. I really like Chelsea Green, man. Sonya Deville, I don't know. Her best work, I felt, was actually with Naomi when they were having their little thing on SmackDown a year ago-ish, year and a half, two years, I don't know. That was actually interesting to BC. They were utilizing Sonya. They were integrating her back. Naomi was getting the TV time. Uh, that's when Naomi was just on fire, too. Uh, one of the best women's matches you're going to see in, the, in a long time was actually her and Charlotte Flair. I think that was on a SmackDown. But Sonya and Chelsea, hey, if you want to put tag titles on them, I'm actually fine with that in the future, right? Do it correctly. But the middle of a Monday Night Raw, when you've just had six previous champions this calendar year alone, and you're literally just playing hot potato, guys, no, that was not the right decision. Just to fast-track Smile Santana Raquel Rodriguez to SummerSlam to take on Rhea? There's no, there's no sense in the world that could be made of this. To switch the titles again, when it feels like just a month ago... Ronda and Shayna got the titles, and two weeks later, they were just already dropping them. And they got them from a team that just got it. Was that Raquel and Mamma Mia Morgan too? I don't even know. 
You don't even know who's champions anymore for some of these titles. They either go on forever and ever and ever like Roman <laughs> or they're, it's too short and you don't even know who's the champ. You can't build a proper division until you build a proper division. Build the wrestlers. Sonia and Chelsea, we still don't look at them as a team because they haven't done it correctly. And they all of a sudden have titles already. So, and I can't say I wanted them on Smile Santana or Mamma Mia Morgan either. Because Liv Morgan deserves more than just to be in a tag team with Raquel. That's all they do with Raquel. They throw fucking all these tag team partners on her. They always get injured. Aaliyah, Shotzi twice. Liv Morgan got injured. That's all they do. And now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they fast track Raquel, Smile Santana, the SummerSlam. I can't believe, but I also am not shocked at the same time that they had the titles change hands last night to Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. <laughs> But we'll see. You, you know, the, the community is very fickly funny. Uh, there's some people going, this is the right call. Now we can get a true division around them. What are you fucking talking about, you stupid, stupid person? <laughs> stupid person. Alert, alert. Stupid person. Must avoid stupid person approaching at the light. What are you saying? Sasha Banks and Bailey were supposed to be the foundation for a division to be built around. And they didn't give them the time of day. Bailey and Sasha. Then Sasha and Naomi. They're not worthy enough to build a foundation around? So, uh, fucking uh, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Legit badasses. You can't build a division around that. It's, it's Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green. I'm supposed to believe are going to be champions for the next six to nine months up front. That's weird. That's absolutely fucking batshit ballistically weird to even think about. And again, I like Chelsea. Exactly. Somebody just said, somebody brought up the, uh, the manager. Who was that man? James from Fajitas. Chelsea wants to talk to a manager. I love when she debuted. She kept going to Adam Pierce. I want to talk to the manager of Raw. And Adam Pierce is like, I told you on Friday, I'm also the manager of Raw. I'm, I'm, I'm the manager. <laughs> then she shows up on SmackDown. I'd like to talk to the manager of SmackDown. I told you the last four shows, I'm the manager. I'm not saying there's not character here, guys. But you, my bigger issue here is not Chelsea and Sonya winning the titles. That's fine. All right. My issue is how we got here and look at all the title holders this year alone. Look at the non-existent division. There's a lot of massive problems and nobody wants to talk about it. We're going to go, oh, Chelsea and Sonya, I like them. Let's see where it goes, BC. Well, we already know where it goes. Nowhere. New tag team champions, Chelsea Green, Sonia Deville. All I'm saying is you cannot blame Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, Naomi, Trinity Fatu for walking out of this company, man. Look at this division. Look at how it has been booked just since they've walked out. Look at how many title holders there have been. Look at the type of matches, how the titles changed hands, and you would look at Sasha, Naomi, Trinity, and Mercedes, and you would say here today on the 18th of July, 2023, ladies, you made the right call. Sometimes you bank on yourself. You make the right call. Cody Rhodes, even with the WrestleMania botch, man, did he make the right call. AEW, man, he was not happy in that uh, EVP role. The, the locker room was fighting each other. He didn't want to make the calls with the Bucks and Omega. He started getting booed in AEW. He felt underappreciated. Vince McMahon flew out to talk to Cody, man. And uh, a deal was signed not long after. But 
Cody, man, he is fucking... I mean, this dude is over. He was going into Mania, and we knew he was still going to be after. You'll never get that Mania moment back, unfortunately, if he ever does sniff a title, Roman's title. But man, is he over, man. The kids love this dude. Grown-ups, when you're there and his music hits, it, 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 it hits, man. It hits. Um, Cody Rhodes today is 47% better than he was in AEW. I would easily say that. So he just gambled on himself. Could you imagine being an EVP of a place like AEW? You have it made. You're one of the powers. And could you imagine walking away from that and saying, I'm hoping they book me correctly. Paul Levesque booked that mania shit. Paul Levesque did him dirty at mania. But and ever since, he's been in this weird thing with Brock. But he remains massively over. There's a big documentary happening on the 31st of July. I can't wait to see that. It looks like no punches were held back. It looks like everything is on the table. Not a lot of editing. Not a lot of eyes going, oh, we can't have that in there. There's a huge documentary, man. We're going to get a lot on this Cody Rhodes sitch. But the ride that this guy has had in AEW, it just felt like he was getting to be miserable. He wasn't happy. Once he started getting booed and he felt underappreciated, he felt he had to do weird things like, if I lose this match, I can never go for the world title again. What? That makes zero sense. Why would you do that to yourself? And then I think Cody knew, you know, it, I, I, got, I got to make a fucking change here, man. He had unfinished business over in WWE, and then uh, here we are with him. Um, but Cody Rhodes, man, he banked on himself, and, and look where he is now. Sasha Banks and Mercedes, to wrap this up, they banked on themselves, pun intended. And if you look at the women's division today, Sasha Banks and Naomi made the right call. It may be for some less money. It may not have as many eyeballs on them. Sasha over there, IWGP, and should have been strong coming back from injury just like Bailey and uh, Trinity Fatu winning the Impact Championship. But you know what? Their happiness, probably on an all-time high. Their love for this pro wrestling thing, probably at an all-time high. I have such respect For people that stand up for themselves, bank on themselves, and go out and just do their shit. That's why I also have such disrespect for people that don't do that, like Paul Levesque McMahon. Stays right there. While everybody else gives him a pass. New tag team champions. Salute to Sonia Deville and Chelsea Green. Congratulations. We'll see where it goes. If history has shown us anything, it's going right into a brick wall. But we'll see. Next up, a very well done backstage segment between Finn Balor and Sethington Rollins. Um, Finn Balor walks in, gives Byron Saxton Das boot and has a sit down face to face convo with Sethington Rollins, a very intense, amplified, believable Balor attacks Rollins. Rollins is like, dude, if if, I'm going to tell you this once, take your shot or get out of my face. Balor backs up. Sethington tells Byron, are we done here? Is that pretty much it? Yeah, that was ruined. All of a sudden, he gets fucking like a chair thrown at him or something. Balor takes some shots in on him and says, make the match. He wants him to talk to Pierce and make the match official for SummerSlam. This was very well done. Um, People are saying, oh, wow, that was really good. It must have been Paul Levesque McMahon. Well, which is it? You just said that Vince's fingerprints are all over it and he's working remotely. So which is it? Oh, we're picking and choosing. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Listen, the segment was good. That's what matters. Very well done. The camera angles were not overdone because there was a couple of edit cuts. NXT does this to a nauseating level at times. Uh, There's too many cuts. It's way too overly edited. Uh, They didn't do that. 
very real, very amplified, very intense, very good backstage segment. You know, things like that gets me more interested in something. Balor and Sethington have faced each other 17 times. We just saw them at the last pay-per-view. This is the second biggest event of the calendar year. I need more. This is a start to get me to care about it. By the way, I was talking about the women's division a minute ago. Bailey, guys, a lot of people were saying it's scary because she just fell. Nobody, there was not even contact. Not true. If you go back and look at it, uh, it was a botch. I don't know who botched. Bailey thought Asuka was going high. Asuka thought Bailey was going high. I, I have no idea. But Asuka dips down. Bailey stiffs her leg. Asuka clips the like her shin area. So that could absolutely tweak your knee right out. Tear up your ACL, your MCL, the meniscus blown. That could do all that. It could also fuck up your ankle. That could actually break your shin. But... Asuka, if you watch it back, Asuka did clip the leg of Bailey. Her leg planted. Bailey thought Asuka was going high. She went low. So there was contact, and that's what happened to Bailey. So I wanted to um I wanted to clear that up. A lot of people thought that she just fell. No, Asuka did make contact. Not blaming Asuka, obviously. I don't know. There was a there's a miscommunication. Uh, Charlie Flair broke character afterwards and went over. This must be a womanly thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> the men don't really do this. They, they kind of stay aside and they let the ref like, like take care of it so they're not breaking character too much. Charlie Flair walks right over and just starts going, are you all right? It was, she's like fucking trying to help. I'm like, dude, come on. You can't do that, bro. <laughs> she's fine. It's a leg thing. It's pro wrestling. You got to stand to the side. The ref is putting up the X. They're going to come down. You're in the ring, man. You got the fans watching. You can't just fucking go, oh my goodness. <laughs> she tweaked her knee. Oh no, that's your fucking, you've been fucking rivals with her. Maybe it's a womanly thing. I don't know. BC, it should be a humane thing to stop the show and make sure she's okay. It's a knee. It's an injury. Stand to the side. Like when Shane McMahon blew his leg out. Miz just fucking stayed away. He started talking shit. Yeah, bitch, leg blew out. What up? I'll, I'll take your other one out. You have no legs, no legs, no legs, no legs, no legs. Shane McMahon has no fucking legs. No legs, no legs, no legs, no legs. Shane O'Mac has no legs. Right? Miz is talking a bunch of shit. Fucking Snoopy dog. You see Snoopy? Snoopy comes in and starts fucking getting physical with Miz while Shane is getting fucking lugged out. That's what you do. You get injured. You get injured. It happens. Charlotte just walks over like she's the EMT. Step aside. Go wrestle Asuka. Battle to the outside. Let the eyeballs be on the action. Of course, we're all concerned. If she just dropped and she's passed out and she just had a heart attack, okay, maybe that's different. It's clear. She's holding her leg. I saw it. Referee Jess isn't panicking. Referee Jessica Carr is just like, uh, yep, X. Oh, we got you, Bale. Hold on. Come on, man. Like, like, play up the... I know kayfabe is basically dead these days. But fuck, man. Like, just... Uh, it, it, I don't know. It's missing this level of toughness pro wrestling today, man. It's missing this level of just like, man, everyone just wants to be a good Samaritan, even during performance. Bailey doesn't need you petting her on the head, Charlie. Just go wrestle Asuka to the outside. She needs everybody to just focus on something else while she's injured. I love how the fucking, uh, you, you see the, uh, the, the train, the athletic trainers, by the way, when they finally got there, 18 minutes later, it seems they just fucking waltz up like nothing. Like they just been eating fucking cheeseburgers and fries from five guys earlier. And they just got the word that the X was thrown up. Right. And they're like, Oh fuck. Cindy, do you got this? Uh, Douglas, I got the last one. How about we do rock, scissor, paper? 
Right? Finally fucking Ro who who's the live events fucking uh, who's running the live events? I think it's Road Dog Jesse James, correct? Road Dog is like, will you both go out there? So here comes fucking Cindy and Douglas, seven minutes after she's the fucking ex is thrown out, it seems. And Cindy and Douglas are like, guys, when I say they're just walking up like casually, they're walking up like this is a fucking uh, potato stand and they're going to buy a sack of potatoes. Right? And they're going fucking or apple picking, right? They're picking apples or it's fucking Halloween. They're going to pick pumpkins. They're just walking casually. Oh, Billy, you got injured? What do you got going on here? Tweak your knee? Oh, that's not good. It's the other way. Yeah, snap that back in place. Hey, Cindy, check this out. Look at this one, man. The, the, the video is so fucking hilarious, if, if not tragic. They just walk up like nothing. There was so much wrong with that anyway, guys. I kind of wish I didn't see that fucking, uh, that shit. Anyway, 275 on the ups. Let's get that to 300, guys. I appreciate it. That's the deal on Bailey. Now we just got to find out the injury. I don't believe, JR9, do we have an actual injury or no? We don't have a, the actual injury, I don't think we know yet. Oh my god, JR9 Gaming, no, no question, bro. I mean, Jerry Lawler had his heart attack. Doc Sampson was right there, thankfully. Because if it was Cindy and Douglas, fuck, bro. They take so long, you'd have a heart attack by proxy. The whole front row would have fucking heart attacks. Not yet. Yeah, there's no word on Bailey. We hope uh, and wish her nothing but the best, man. Speedy recovery. Hopefully it's not too uh, severe. She just came back from the torn ACL MCL. So it's, it looks like it could be the same exact thing. I don't know if it was the same leg or not. Um, next was a pro wrestling shit storm. There is literally, I want you guys to listen to this. Uh, T85 backup. It, yeah, still, it, is it the same leg? Oh, you guys are talking about flair. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was the same leg. That would suck if it's the same leg for Bailey. Next up, guys, there was literally, and I mean literally, a Viking boat constructed at ringside. A Viking boat was constructed at ringside, and we're told that we're getting a Viking rules match. The Vikings are literally posing at the front of the ship. Now, I want you to picture this. There's a boat constructed attached to the ring. A Viking boat! And the Vikings are on the top of the, the front of the boat posing to camera B like they're really Vikings. Like they took this to another level. They're like, well, fuck. We're going to take this Viking thing to a whole nother amplified degree. And they constructed a pirate ship, a Viking ship. And they're at the front of this thing. And they're posing like they're actually Vikings sailing the seven seas in search for Captain Jack Sparrow's hidden treasure. And if that's not enough to make you question how you're spending your Monday night, Titus O'Neil is on commentary. Oh, shit. <laughs> Titus O'Neill is on commentary for a Viking rules match. There's all these Viking shields around the ring. Again, there's a Viking ship attached to the ring. There's fucking, I don't know, swords and tables and dragons. And I don't even know what was around. Now, here's, here's the funny part, man. The match was actually entertaining because Alpha Academy has just been crushing it, right? They've gotten such bizarre booking and they've made the best out of it time after time. Maxine took a gnarly bump when she was driven through a table by Van Halen, one of my favorite bands uh, from the 80s and 90s. Van Halen took Maxine right through a table. 
And Otis was double power bombed by both Vikings for the W. So Otis takes the pin, takes the L for Alpha Academy. Vikings win the match. That had to happen. It's a Vikings rules match, man. If they lose that, their own type of match, that's just it. Send them to AEW or something. Let them be War Machine again. Or they probably have a better shot at the local bingo hall in front of 12 motherfuckers because they are done in WWE if they lost that match last night. Sad to see Gable and Otis lose another fucking match. But at least they turn this bizarre booking into something actually entertaining. They do it time and time again. Guys, I could not believe when I looked up and I saw a dragon pirate viking ship as part of the ring. And Titus O'Neil is on commentary. I'm thinking at the jump, this cannot get any worse. And then all of a sudden, I was entertained. It was fun. It was okay. Everybody relax. Do I need to see that again anytime soon? Never again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> we got it. It worked out because of Alpha Academy. Thankfully, that's it. Other than that, they're taking this Viking shit way too seriously. I mean, they have constructed pirate ships, man. I mean, if they put that type of effort into their creativity, could you imagine what better of a product we'd be getting? But no, this is what they spent the whole week on. How can we create a pirate ship? Shayna Baszler defeats Nikki Cross, I believe it was. I blinked and it was over. It looked like Nikki Cross was being rolled out of the ring. I'm not even joking. I missed the match. <laughs> I think it was Nikki Cross who got literally squashed by Baszler. Um, Post-match, Ronda Rousey is in the last possible row of the arena. Like, if the nosebleed section had a, a hidden level, Ronda Rousey found the hidden level of the nosebleed section. That's how high up she was. Um, cause she was way up there. She cuts a promo on Shayna and Rhonda says that, that Shayna is just a bootleg version of Ronda Rousey. Baszler responds and I quote, you're just pissed. You're just pissed because in WWE, I'm more Ronda Rousey than you. That was actually good. Cause it's everything BC has been saying. Shayna Baszler told Rhonda, you're pissed because I'm more Ronda Rousey than you. That's epic. Because it's true. You take Ronda Rousey in UFC, and we all know she was made for WWE. The shit talking, the not giving a flying fuck, an actual badass. Bro, she was made for WWFE. And then she got there, and wow, has this been a fucking botch. At first, badass when she was with The Rock, looking at Stephanie and Triple H. Her WrestleMania match with Kurt Angle, H, and Stephanie was really good. Heavily rehearsed, obviously, but still good. And then it just fell to the wayside, man. And Ronda Rousey was more WWE in the UFC than she's WWE in WWE. I hope that makes sense. She has been a flop. And that's sad to say because I'm a huge Ronda supporter. But this has failed. So Basler is actually telling a lot of truth here. You're pissed because I'm more Ronda Rousey than you. You take away the fruit roll-up two-minute matches that she has been invested in since she started on the main roster. Shayna Baszler is still looked at on somehow as more of a badass than Ronda. Because Ronda is anything but a, ba a badass in WWE. She doesn't even feel like she's in the realm of top five badasses for the females in WWE. She doesn't even feel like she's in the conversation of top five. And this is fucking Ronda Rousey? How do you butcher her to that degree? They found a way to do it, though. They found a way to butcher Ronda Rousey to the point where she doesn't even feel like she's a badass. Um, and Rhonda, man, she was obviously given this script word for word days ago to memorize. And she memorized it. If you guys didn't hear it, this is what happened. And this is coming from a Rhonda supporter, by the way, which is probably an unpopular opinion. It's not an opinion. I am. So it's an unpopular take. People don't want to hear that. Oh, fuck Rhonda. But I am actually a supporter. But 
She gets these scripted promos. She does memorize them. Good for her. But then she rushes through it. She doesn't have the confidence still to this day to take a breath. Let it breathe. Let your words have meaning. When you get scripted promos, how you deliver them is everything. Everything. It doesn't matter what the words say. In fact, the words that were written for Ronda last night were actually good. If you guys caught the promo, if you guys literally listen to the words, it's actually pretty fucking good promo. Ronda butchered it because she rushed it. She literally sped read it. She sped read it. She read through the entire, you know, when you memorize something and you just try to rush through it. And it just tells the audience that you're just memorizing words. She talked so fast that you couldn't even get the message in her words. That's what the shame is, man. The words were good. Let it breathe. Let the audience react. I don't give a fuck if they want you. Interact with that shit. Make it meaningful. She just lacks the confidence in those promos. And she just wants to spit it out so she doesn't fuck up a word. And that's where they butchered Rhonda. Rhonda is best when she is unscripted. Let her go out there. If she's going to flub words, it's her own. She'll tell fans to fuck off, talent to fuck off, Vince H. It doesn't matter. What made her special in the UFC is what should have made her even more special in the WWE. But it hindered her more than anything. They scripted the shit out of her. They rehearsed the fuck out of her. And we got a shell of what Ronda Rousey once was. Robert Coleman. Yeah, man. I mean, anybody that truly, like, especially Ronda's promos, but any wrestler's promos, you can tell when they're heavily scripted and when they're just not comfortable delivering the lines. You can tell they're rushing through them. And that's exactly what happened. Ronda rushed through that shit. Santivia Major, unscripted Ronda would have been best for business, no question. Instead, they did the opposite. They overscripted Ronda because she's not that confident and they don't have the confidence in her. It's a recipe for disaster. It's sad that Ronda Rousey didn't work in WWE. It looks like she is going back to UFC. Now, I don't know if that's the fight. This is a different era of ladies. These ladies will tear motherfuckers like Ronda up. But I hope her the best. I think she's going to go back in commentary or do some side shows for UFC and make some good money and go back in that. Like, looks like Ronda is more comfortable in that, in that realm. But it does like look like she's going back to UFC, and that's probably, unfortunately, she should have been much more in WWE. It's unfortunate to see her go, but I know she has to. Um, and then we went into Miz TV, Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark uh, face-to-face with Becky Lynch in Becky's nighttime pajamas. She literally came out in pajamas. Now, I don't give a fuck, but actually, Becky looked uh, Becky looked pretty hot last night. You know what I mean? Um, I'm one of those dudes that I'll take the, the sporty girl, the, the girl with the hoodie and some fucking baggy jeans or something. I'll take that, you know, baseball cap. Maybe I'll take that female over a girl that's in a dress and all gussied up with overdone makeup. I'm not one of those dudes. I like those sporty girls. You know what I mean? I like those, uh, a, a little bit more down to earth, man. They don't feel like they have to get all gussied up. I like that shit. You know, a girl that's not afraid to go out in her fucking pajamas. I find that even more sexy, to be honest. Way more sexy. A girl in her pajamas, way hotter than a girl in a dress. Maybe it makes BC think sleepy time. I don't know. But (laughs) Becky in her PJs, I'll take that shit. (laughs) She looked ultra sexy. Abs are on point. This lady just had a baby not long ago. A year ago, if if even, she just had a baby. Now, I don't know if you guys know, ladies will tell you this that had kids. It's not easy to pull off that stomach after you had a kid, bro. And Becky is sporting that shit. She should be proud of that. So she's got the Winnie the Pooh top. What do you call that, ladies? Croc top? What is that called? Ladies in the chat, what is that called? Uh, I call it the Winnie the Pooh, the poopy shirt, right? It, just, it, it's, it cuts off here, you know, because Winnie the Pooh is fat. I like Winnie the Pooh. But he's fat. That's his character. He's a fat bear. He keeps eating everything. He does not stop. If he sees honey, he'll fucking rock you over to get to the honey. 
so Winnie the Pooh's shirt doesn't go over his stomach. Crop top, thank you, yes. Alicia, rock those PJs, man. I see a lot of people up in Dunkin'. They're like, I don't even need to get dressed. I'm just going to go up my PJs, bro. Yeah, so anyway, she's out there in her PJs. I think Trish actually said, oh, it's good to see you in Rue's PJs. And, and, of course, that's her daughter, Becky's daughter. So Becky's like, don't you talk about my daughter ever again. Trish is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Trish knows how to push those buttons. I love it, bro. Bringing up this woman's daughter, dude. Like, that's just another level of, damn, Trish just went there. Remember, I said this a month ago when Trish saw the front row, this hot girl next to this guy, and, he, and she goes, is that your wife? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, call me. Anyway, even knowing that that's his wife, she said, call me. <laughs> Trish is awesome, bro. Trish gets in a lot of trouble for some of the things she says, but she's from the Attitude Era, you know? So she knows how to push buttons, and today it doesn't fly with a lot of people. They think it's crossing the line. Whatever. That's what makes Trish funny, man. That's what makes Trish show f so fucking funny. She's going to push the envelope a little bit, and today's wrestling fan doesn't like it. Nah, screw Trish. No way, man. I say just what James Shrimp Fajitas in the chat says. Thank you, Trish. So Ms. TV, they have a face-to-face. -face. Now... Tr Becky said, by any means, I want this match. Or Trish said, okay, under one condi three conditions. Number one, you're going to beat Zoe Stark. If you can do that, then you have to say, you have to get down on your knees and say, thank you, Trish. And then number three, I want you to tattoo, thank you, Trish, on your chest. Now, those are going to be quite the pair of titties that Sethington is looking over when they're doing their nighty, uh, nighty business. I wonder if they do the fucking OO song too, man. That, that'd be something, right? Waking up fucking rude during the nighty time business. But that's going to be something for Sethington to have to look out every single time they're doing their sexy time, bro. Sethington is doing the deed and this girl's got thank you. He's got Trish Stratus in his mind. <laughs> I know there's a hidden alter, alternative motive for Trish Stratus. While Sethington is doing his business, thank you, Trish is staring at him via the Becky boobies. I know what Trish's plan is here, man. Getting Sethington's dome piece. I got it, unit. To put it on the woman's boobies? Really, Trish? Damn, that is so scathing. It couldn't be like on the, on the tramp stamp on the back. Couldn't be on a calf. The back of the neck, maybe. She wants it right on the fucking boobies. Every time Sethington is looking down at those things. Thank you, Trish. You didn't think of that, did you? Oh, you didn't think of that. Yeah, Trish Stratus thinks of that. Big Bronston. Bronston Reed. That's B R O N S T O N. Bronston Reed. No relation. To Brockton Lesnar, by the way. Bronston is different than Brockton. They're not related. Big Bronston Reed defeats Shinsuke Nakamura via DQ after Tommaso Ciampa comes out of nowhere, eating hot dogs in the seventh row of Section 208. And he's like, I think I'll, I want to get some airtime tonight. Tommaso jumps in the ring to no reaction. Kicks Bronston or something. I, I forgot what happened. And, and gets Shinsuke DQ'd. So then after the match, Tommaso's like, I'm so sorry. And Nakamura's like, uh, fuck you. Boom. Kicks him in the face. And then backstage says, I'm sick of everyone in my business, Byron. That's what he tells Byron Saxton. So I like this mean amplified shriek in Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know what that did for Tommaso Ciampa, guys. Ciampa is just another fucking spoke on the wheel at this point. Good job, Triple H. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to blame Vince. That's the narrative. Good job, Vince. The main event tag titles on the line. KO and Sami Zayn versus Damian, Damian Priest and Dum Dum of Judgment Day. Uh, great chemistry between these four. Uh, Morgan attacks Ripley. And we have a nice finishing sequence. Kevin Owens stuns Priest. Simultaneously, Zayn delivers a halluva kick to Dum Dum for the victory. The tag titles remain on Sami Zayn and KO. I wish, I wish there was a cliffhanger to end last night's show. I, I really wanted something to make us have to tune into next week. 
Because even though as bizarre and all over the place this show was, I found it more entertaining than not. It's more entertaining last night than it's been in recent memory. So Raw, they, they tried some new stuff. They did some bizarre shit. It was all over the place, but I found it to be entertaining more so than in recent memory. It just was missing one big thing, a cliffhanger. And it just ended once again with KO and Sammy hoisting up tag titles when we all know it's a non-existent division. And that's the way that it ended, guys. That is your Monday Night Raw review. I appreciate every single one of you staying here for over two hours while we went over that review. Um, if you're here just for the review, salute. I appreciate you. This is where you get off the Amplified Express. Until next time, and, and there will be a next time. Top guy, I'm out. B you're out. You're out. BC saying check you. But if you want to stick around, BC's going to go over some supers. I hope I have enough battery uh, to go over all these. There was a lot, man. You guys were amplified throughout this last two hours. But I'm going to stick around for a little bit longer and uh, shoot the shit with my amplified unit. So feel free. You guys can stick around. Even if you didn't send the super chat, I'd love to have you around, man. We can shoot the shit a little bit more. Uh, but if you have to take off and whoop some ass in the world, go do that. Go whoop ass. You can always watch this later. It'll be uploaded as a regular podcast. Salute, everybody. That's got to take off. Check you. Until next time. Now, what I would like to do is get my super chats on the big screen because then it helps BC actually read. I'm not at Triple H's age yet where I have to put glasses on, thankfully. <laughs> Uh, JR9 Gaming starts it off with a 10 spot. If Alba and Isla unified titles, oh, if Alba and Isla unified titles, this mess of three champs in a month could have been avoided. Plus, the NXT ladies need a mid card title since Triple H took their tag away. One title is not enough for their stacked roster. JR9, you bring up a couple of good points I, I need to spend a second on because I totally forgot to mention this. Do you guys, guys, we didn't even talk about Alba Fire and Isla Dawn as we just went over the last six tag title holders for the women this year alone. Alba and Isla come up with the NXT tag titles. They unify them over to Ronda and Shayna. And then they just went away into obscurity. Where the fuck is Alba Fire and Isla? Chance and Carter were starting to look like they had some momentum and they were left off. But Alba and Isla, wow, you got to feel bad for them, dude. You probably didn't even realize it, right? They were completely off the show. That's what's even worse. You probably forgot about Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Called up for what? Just to drop their NXT titles and go play in obscurity. Wow, brother. Yeah, NXT could really benefit from a mid-card. And, and sadly, Jar 9, I don't know if that would even help out your girl, JC Jane, from the booking you're telling me they're doing with her. Doesn't sound like HBK wants to even give her something that was created for such. Anyway, that's a whole nother amplified subject. Jar 9 Gaming, much love and respect. Great, valid points. Points I forgot to even mention, so I thank you double time. Kevin MD, two spot. Yeah, they're all going to be saying his name, L.A. Knight. Yeah, Kevin MD. Courtney Ward, two spot coffee. Good morning, BC and the unit from San Diego, California. To all my California unit members, man, especially Courtney Ward over in San Diego, which I would love to be right now, getting some California weather because we got storms and we've been getting nothing but storms and rain. Uh, but Courtney, I appreciate you. Always love seeing you up in here, and I appreciate that. Good morning or afternoon now to you, California. No, it's still morning, 12, 11, 10, 14 in California, San Diego. Salute. Hopefully you're enjoying your morning. Stay amplified, Courtney. Christopher! Christopher Blackshear, two spot coffee. Yet another episode of Raw is shit. <laughs> it was so bizarre that a lot of this was actually entertaining, Christopher. If you saw the full three hours... I think a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. You didn't sleep through it. A lot of it you were wondering, are they really doing this? It was an interesting Raw, to say the least. 
Christopher Blackshear, good seeing you up in here, man. Sheriff Rivers with a five spot wolf. He currently have a fever, 104. Got a new card, so I had to renew my membership. This show, most of it, just made my headache five times worse. <laughs> First of all, I hope you're feeling a little better, Sheriff Rivers. Hopefully, I at least entertained you these last two hours plus. Uh, get that fever down, bro. Um, even when you're under the weather, the rules are, as a gold card member, you got to stay amplified. And that's exactly what you did in this chat, dude. With 104 degree fever, Sheriff Rivers is showing that love and respect. It's right back to you, bro. And I'm glad to have you back with that gold card after that name. Sheriff Rivers, one of my tried and trues for a long time on this channel. Pimp Zeus with a two spot. Typical WWE nonsense. Pimp Zeus, you can personify that with 100 exclamation points, bro. Pimp Jesus, salute to you. Kevin MD, two spot. What's with the BS on LA Knight copying The Rock? Question mark. I don't know. It's a narrative that people are just coming down hard on. Uh, they think he's copying Stone Cold and The Rock. Yeah, there, there's a lot of Stone Cold in LA Knight. There's a lot of The Rock in LA Knight. But it's 100% LA Knight still. You know, I, if, if it's subconscious, I, I don't think he's trying to copy them. Yeah, he admits those were his big role models. But we, the fans, can see through bullshit. We would never elevate him to the level we already did if we just saw Stone Cold and Rock. We see 100% of L.A. Knight, and we know that that's the type of dude we want to root for right now. So it doesn't matter who he's trying to be like or anything like that. The fact that it is working, the fact that it's, this is the first L.A. Knight original, that's what matters. So they can hate all they want. And I know what Kevin Nash said. I don't give a shit. L.A. Knight is in Kevin Nash's mouth. It's not the other way around. L.A. Knight is super over right now. Kevin Nash is a past wrestler with a podcast. Just the way that it is, man. Dude, we got a couple 50-spot banger bombs that started us off, by the way. Ash, or no, Jane Donnelly first, was Jane Donnelly with a 50-spot banger bomb, man. That's a lot of coffees being chucked at the channel. Jane Donnelly says, what up, BC and the AMP unit? I can't stick around right now at work at the moment. On hour 26 of my shift so far. Woo! Sarcastically. Wish me luck, AMP unit, and rock this bitch out in my absence. BC, you the GOAT. As always, much love and respect. Red team, go! P.S. Kill me, J.K. Rock it out, man. I love working long shift when I when I had the nine and nine to five type jobs. I used to love that, you know. I'd, if there was overtime, I'd rock it out. I just I never was one of those people that's like looking at the clock trying to get out. I'm always amplified. I always want to be better than everybody else. I always want to be better than everybody else. I always want to do more work. I want to work better. I want to work harder. I want to work smarter. And uh, before you know it, 12, 13, 14, 15 hour shifts go by and I'm like, let's do it tomorrow. But Jane Donnelly, hopefully you smashed it out and will continue to do such today. You can go back. This will be up on the channel as a regular upload as soon as we are no longer live. Jane Donnelly. So much respect, man. I appreciate all the coffees, but more than anything, I appreciate seeing your name up in the chats, man, for these live streams and for these regular uploads. Jane Donnelly Gold Status. Bro, salute. A 50-spot banger bomb. Guys, that's a lot of coffee. And then Stegmeister came up and said, fucking hold my coffee. Ash Steggles, the Stegmeister, with a 50-spot banger bomb says Alba and Isla got done seriously filthy for the tag titles to change hands on a shit show that was last night to Chelsea and Sonia. And Liv and Raquel didn't even hold the gold for a month. Stegmeister, I told you, brother, the, you basically had a, ch a different set of champions every month this year. That's what it equates to. Six different title changes, two vacancies. If you make the two vacancies a title change, basically, or a title reign... Just, just to make simplify it, that's seven. And there's only been seven, not even seven full months of the calendar year. You've had a different set of champions every month this year. And then you wonder why titles are not prestigious in this company for the tag team divisions. Then you wonder why there's not even a tag team division. It's non-existent. Then you wonder why Sasha Banks and Naomi walked away. 
I know, bro. The Stegmeister. That started with the Stiffmeister, by the way. Uh, Stiffler from American Pie, if you guys don't know. And they're in a new commercial. I think it's for like Grubhub or some shit. Jim and Stiffmeister. Stiffler. They're actually in a new commercial, man. Again, I think it's Grubhub. I'm not sure. But it's cool to see American Pie kind of uh, rejuvenated. It's always good to see Stegmeister, one of my tried and trues, one of my first ever gold card members. And always there with Jane Donnelly fucking matching those banger bombs I've noticed. Jane Donnelly's at work, but uh, Stegmeister, are you still up in the chat or no, bro? I know that was delivered when we started this over two hours ago. Yeah, I'm not seeing Stegmeister in the chat. But bro, when you, when you view this back... Uh, know that I appreciate you, brother, big time. Fleck Wapo, 10 spot. I won't be going to SmackDown Live Friday due to one of my manager's daughter's husband passing away. Anyway, it's not a matter of if, but I will be in Florida. It's a matter of when determined by me. Well, thanks for telling us your sketch, Fleck. I hope you are able to catch, uh, what is it, Rumble in Orlando, I believe, is what they're trying to do. Or is that SmackDown in Orlando? I don't know, Fleck, but thank you for telling us your sketch, man. I, I hope you uh I hope you make your travel arrangements. I hope you succeed in them, bro. Appreciate the coffees. Kevin M D. I got Kevin M D. Yes. The people pissed off that LA Knight is rock and stone cold, uh, a bootleg. That's that's bullshit, but I already got to that. Over three hundred on the ups. I appreciate that, guys. I just saw that now. Uh let's stay amplified. Let's go to four hundred on the ups. This was on, do you guys realize this was on 26 minutes of notice on a fucking Tuesday morning? Tuesday morning, nobody knew I was going to be live, not even BC. I was able to uh, catch a red eye and get back from all my travels. And I said, let's go to the gym and then cut this fucking live edition of Raw's review. 26 minutes of notice on a Tuesday morning. And we are on our way to 400 on those ups, man. Appreciate that. Big Nang with a five spot and a two spot says, Solo makes more sense than Jason Uso. In the future, if no Rock or Cody for WrestleMania 40. I always think about it comparing to David Batista and Schnaz McGee. Problem is, now the good news is by WrestleMania 40... Solo would have a lot more work under his belt. This He was done dirty by just being ripped out of NXT and placed right into the bloodline story. So he's got it. He was basically shown to, uh, thrown to the sharks. So that's why I say I can't even think about Solo Sokoa defeating Roman Reigns for a title right now. I can't. I can't think that Montreal, Sami Zayn, and he couldn't even get the job done. Montreal. Cody Rhodes at Mania, Big E, title versus title, all these people, and it's Solo that wins it? I think there's better story to tell that doesn't involve a championship on the line with anything to do with the bloodline. I don't think Jason Uso needs it. I don't think Solo Sokoa needs it. The Rock, you can build something around it. I don't even think The Rock needs the title from Roman. If it's within the family, that alone is the big story. Who is the tribal chief of that dynasty? That's, that's it, guys. If you ain't doing Montreal, Sami Zayn, WrestleMania, Cody, Big E, title versus, if you ain't doing shit like that, I can't believe Jason or Solo is going to get it, bro. So, big dang, it's all what we believe. It's all what, what we would like to see. I understand. I just can't see what good comes out of any of this long term if Roman drops it to somebody within the fam. Big Nang, two spot as well. Why Schnaz McGee got to steal Scooter's last name? Shake my head. <laughs> I think that's what Matt P.H. Riddle got upset about. You right? You got Schnaz McGee, and he's like, I can no longer be Scooter McGee. I'm going to be Scooter McStevenson. And he made it official. Too funny, Big Nang. Uh, Bobby Means with a two spot. I feel the women were were pretty solid. Uh, Bobby Means, last. Do you mean last night? Um, two spot. I feel the women were pretty solid. I think. I think you mean last night. Uh, I. I can't disagree. As much as it doesn't make sense, Smiles Santana and Rhea Ripley backstage with the Liv Morgan headbutt, that beat down. I actually enjoyed that. Um. I like the words between Baszler and Ronda. It was just rushed with Ronda. 
as far as the match, Shayna just squashed Nikki Cross, so that wasn't anything special. The tag title match was nothing special. Raquel spent most of it on the outside playing up the leg injury, and then we just got Chelsea Green and Sonya winning the titles. I don't know. I mean, they didn't do anything special last night. Um, but but uh, if you're talking about like Trish Stratus and uh, Becky Lynch in her pajamas, I mean, that, I like that interaction. That was really good. So yeah, I, I would say pretty solid. Nothing uber special, but pretty solid, Bobby Means. If that's what we're talking about. The ladies from last night. Um, Stegmeister, Ash Steggles with a 10 spot. This is on top of the fucking banger bomb. So Ash Steggles, on the next podcast you got you guys see, Stegmeister is basically fucking throwing all the coffees for it. New gold members, let me talk to ya. Wake up, get up, and get amplified. And if you're not down with that, then myself, BC, and the rest of the gold team have just two words for ya. Das Boot! <laughs> Stegmeister, man, you'd be, you'd be cutting better promos than Ronda Rousey in WWE, bro. I love it, Stegmeister. Too good, man. Absolutely. Disrespect, shit talking, all of that, guys. We don't even acknowledge that. We don't even acknowledge that. We literally give you Das Boot. I, I, there's no other way to say it. You're not going to get my attention. I'm not going to acknowledge you for shit talking or disrespect or disagreeing just to disagree, which is just a sign of rudeness. You're not going to get attention from my unit or be, you're going to be given Das Boot and you're done. You're just literally done. Stegmeister knows the deal, bro. We don't have time to fuck around on this channel. We actually have a mission and it is to make pro wrestling great again. Jack Brewer, one of the first Gold Car channel members uh, when we started this seven months ago, by the way. Jack Brewer with a 10 spot. Been a Gold member since day one. Proud to be, uh, and proud to be one. You are the best and the GOAT. Ordered my yeah t-shirt to support my favorite since he was Eli Drake. LA Knight, yeah. Here's a coffee, BC. Uh, first of all, Jack Brewer, I always appreciate your support, bro. Uh, and I do remember you were literally one of, I believe, the first three channel members to join channel membership and earn your gold card. Uh, so I will not forget that. Jack Brewer just got his yeah shirt. I have not bought WWE uh, fucking merch in a long time. In fact, m most of these are not even WWE merches, actually. But uh, I've not got a shirt or any. I've not given WWE any of my money in a long time. Peacock, yes. I got to watch the events, but... Um, honestly, guys, if I find the time to get that yeah shirt, I'm supporting LA Knight. And I think it's pretty badass, man. Yeah. So I do got to pick me up that set, of, that merch, that t-shirt. Jack Brewer, sport that shit proud. And hopefully WWE does right by him, dude. Jamal Strake in five spot coffee. I hate seeing Liv lose and playing hot potato with titles, but I don't want to see Liv in another tag team for years. Yeah, exactly. So we're just looking at the benefits. Nothing else we can do. The decision has been made. The, the deed has been done. Now we hope that Chelsea and Sonya can be something, but with the booking and the way that they present their division, we can't get our hopes up high. But at least Liv Morgan can finally be done with this Smile Santana shit. A. Marie, 316, five spot. I was there at Raw last night. I had an amazing time at Raw. How did Raw come off on TV for y'all? The crowd was loud and fun last night. Atlanta brought it. I think Atlanta made it even more fun. And it came off as wild, bizarre, out of the box, all over the place. And I was entertained for a lot of it. Even the shit that I would have done totally opposite or left off, I was entertained. I somehow was entertained with a fucking pirate ship constructed at ringside. Titus O'Neil is on commentary. Becky Lynch is in her pajamas. Cody Rhodes' mother is yelling at Brock Lesnar. I mean, some crazy shit, but I was entertained for the most part. I'm glad you had a good time live, A. Marie 316. Ash Stegmeister Steggles with now a two spot. He's pretty much getting all the den denominators. I see what you're doing here, Stegmeister. The 50 spot check, 10 spot checked, 2 spot checked. <laughs> Raquel and Liv held the titles for 15 days. Think about that unit. When I say there's basically been new tag champs for the females every month, because that that's what it equals out to, 
15 days by the stat presented to us by Ash Stegmeister Steggles. 15 days. And it's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. Or however she says the introduction. Chelsea Green and Sonia Deville after 15 days. And before that, Ronda and Shayna only held it for what seems like 15 days too. Jack Brewer, Five Spot Coffee, you missed my seven-month milestone on being a gold member. It is okay. You was amplified in telling facts. Keep it real. Stay amplified. Jack Brewer, all apologies if I did miss the milestone, bro. I don't get them back for some reason while I'm live. So I have to catch the milestones when they are live. Sometimes I do miss them, but I get them afterwards, guys. And, and, and honestly, I do a sweet, even if I'm not in front of the camera. And behind the microphone, I'm still giving everybody a salute. I could be in a fucking Starbucks. I'll give a salute every time I read a milestone. So I appreciate you, Jack Brewer. Trust that. Yeah, we got really amplified this entire two and a half hours for sure. Eric Newton, two spot. Bigger nose, Triple H or Sonya Deville. Nobody's got a bigger nose than Triple H because you tell enough lies, Pinocchio ain't even got shit on you. <laughs> Eric Newton, we're going Schnoz McGee, bro. There's a reason he's got that name. Clutch City fan, 10 spot. BC, I'm about to finish my lunch break, but had to stop by to say, what up, pimp? In the box. <laughs> I always want to say congratulations to Trinity. I also want to say congratulations to Trinity for getting her title win. I hope her reign is middle... Uh, I hope her reign is the middle finger to WWE. Yeah, massive congratulations. I put up uh, the bulk of yesterday's podcast about Trinity's situation. So if you guys caught that podcast, I appreciate it. Uh, I told nothing but truth about Trinity's uh, journey to get to Impact. What this means, is it even significant because it's Impact? Oh, I talk all about it. So much respect, so much love over to Trinity. So Clutch City fan, I echo those same sentiments, my man. Um, much love and respect, and I'm so happy for Trinity. Um, kick ass at work, Clutch, and I appreciate the coffees. I appreciate, I always love seeing you up in here, man. I know you don't catch every live, um, so it's always cool to see your name up in here. Clutch City fan, I appreciate, um, I appreciate everything, man. And I'm not even done yet because I got to go over to the second round. While I was calling off those super chats there was more jr9 gaming with a two spot collision pulled in 579,000 in viewership rampage 310 two terrible ratings so breaking news man jr9 gaming saying that collisions rating is out aew collision i think they lost a thousand at least maybe six thousand viewers this was the big cm punk ricky starks matchup um in the owen hart finals and somehow Collision has lost a bit of viewers, 579 in the viewership. Rampage, 310,000. That just needs to be taken off the fucking air. I think we know that. So that is sad to see Collision. A lot of people thought CM Punk Philip Brooks was going to save the company. Instead, it looks to be hurting the company because it's also affecting Dynamite's rating now, having this third big show. Um... So, man, that sucks, bro. Collision, uh, Jaron I Gaming, you said it correctly. Collision just isn't working. And that's sad because I like the feel of Collision. I really do. I actually wish that Dynamite had more of a Collision feel. I like when they started off and the main event is talking shit like they used to do with Saturday night's main event. I like the colors, the red ring ropes. It's colorful, the yellow, the red with the black. There's a good feel to Collision. There's just nothing on there that's must-see. And Philip Brooks is not the draw that everybody thought he was. That's not shade. Uh, the numbers tell you that it's not worth showing up on a Saturday night. I don't even think the numbers would be that better if it was on a Wednesday night and seeing Philip Brooks. Dynamite shows you that. So um, it, it is sad to see, man. Collision just isn't working. Um, even though I feel it's actually better than Dynamite in a lot of areas. Thank you for that, JR9 Gaming. Uh, did not know that we were live when those numbers must have came out. Anthony D with a five-spot coffee says, uh, hold on, Anthony D says, much love and appreciate your true and thorough breakdowns. Anthony D, I appreciate you, brother, being able to handle the amplification. You'd be surprised how many people cannot handle it. They cry over my wrestling takes. They get angry over my wrestling takes. And they literally cry about it. And they can't be a part of the unit. Because I disagree, Maisley. 
Okay, so instead of talking about fucking how you would change the product for the better, you're going to cry over my words. Good. It makes me more happy, and it makes the channel more successful. <laughs> Anthony D. Appreciate you, bro. William F. 10 spot. New channel member, but long time. Subscriber to this channel, William F. I am finally able to catch you live again. Been in the hospital for months recovering, but now home and working again. Thank you for everything you do. Sorry to hear that, William F. I hope everything is better, or at least on the men. I hope everything is working out, brother, uh, health-wise for you. It is so good to see your name back up in the chat. Glad you caught this live. I appreciate you big time. One of my first real tried and trues on the channel, man. I know when that name popped up in the gold card membership, I said, wait a second. I got to give a shout out live. That's William F. So William F, I appreciate you, bro. And hopefully everything is looking on the up and up. As long as I can entertain you for a few, for an hour here and there during the week, that's what matters, man. Ali, five spot. BC, if you was head of creative, how would you have booked SummerSlam make, to make it a better show? Ali, that's going to be a separate podcast. We're going to have to talk about a lot of these matches. And it's going to be a longer conversation. I'm low on battery. I've kept you guys here about two and a half hours. And that's going to be about a half an hour type of a podcast. A, a separate segment of a podcast. So, Ali, I will answer that in great length as we get closer to SummerSlam. But allow me to take this time to say thank you for the coffee and thank you for being up on these live streams and regular podcasts. Ali, it's always good to see you up in here, bro. And I will answer that in great depth as we get closer to SummerSlam, I assure you. Ron C23, five spot coffee. What up, BC? What up, Ron C23? Mr. Charlotte is here, LOL. What are they doing to do? What are they going to do with the NXT tag titles? Question mark. Happy to be a part of the unit. Ron C23, a big Charlie Flair fan, by the way. Even Ron C23 knows, being a Charlie fan, that her booking is atrocious. As far as the NXT tag titles, I don't know. Jer9 Gaming, you tell me what they're doing with NXT tag titles. Oh, wait, they're gone. Jer9, what do you do creatively for titles in NXT? I know earlier you said there needs to be a mid-card title. Do you think that they should have stayed NXT tag titles? I don't see any reason why they would have taken them away. I know a lot of you guys didn't think they were necessary, but... I mean, you have a lot of people that are trying to be developed. Uh, you could have easily made better a better tag division in NXT with their females than the main roster. Just bring in a mid card a mid card title instead, says Jer9 Gaming. Jer9 says there's no teams left in NXT now. That's true. They ravaged it, and then they put them on the sidelines. Carter and Chance, Alba and Isla. You can't even fucking find them, but on a milk carton this past Monday. Ron C23. Stegmeister just checked off the 20 spot box now, bro. 50, check. 10, check. 2, check. Now a 20 spot. Stegmeister says, Jer9, you want the 20 spot, brother? You got the 20. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Stegmeister's over here just fucking checking off boxes. You guys are the fucking best, man. Y you know, I entertain you guys for two to three hours on these reviews. You guys bring the entertainment right back. You make this so much fun. You make me want to keep doing this, bro. I come back from all this traveling. I spend three hours in the gym after getting 16 minutes of sleep, basically. And I want to do this review live for you guys. And when it's all said and done, when I look back on it, you guys make it all fucking worth it. So I honestly, Stegmeister, man, too funny, bro. You guys entertain me just as much. I want you to know that because you're fucking awesome. Appreciate it. Muhammad Isa 20. That's too funny, man. Muhammad Isa. Five spot coffee. BC wrestling fans are weird in 2023. Some of them are just stupid. Some of the best people in the world are wrestling fans. Some of the stupidest happen to be wrestling fans. It's just, it, it, there, there's like no in between these days. Really smart or really stupid. You want to fucking engage in conversation with some of them and the other ones, you won't even look at them a second look. They're so fucking creepy, weird, and just fucking... Uh, fucking peasants. <laughs> Muhammad, I appreciate it. Derek Fleming Jr., two spot. Time to time to play the lame. Had to show some love. Gym time. Derek Fleming Jr., rock it out in the iron paradise, bro. Clang and bang with the best of them. Come out more amplified than you went in. As far as, uh, yeah, I love that. Time to play the game. 
Derek Fleming Jr. It twisted the words a little bit. It's time to play the lame! Because that's Triple H's new motto. Most of the shit this dude produces is pretty fucking lame. But at least last night, entertaining for, uh, for a large part of this, Derek Fleming Jr. Entertaining for the most part. I don't know if that's good or not. That's up for you guys to decide. Unit, did you think Raw was good last night or okay? Or just bad? Let me know in the chat. I'm indecisive. I can't really call it good or bad. I just know that I was at least entertained. Again, I don't know if that was... (laughs) I don't know if that's good or bad, bro. It was more entertained than I was feeling like it was a snooze fest chore to get through. William F., okay at best. Mikal just says bad. Pimpe Sue says okay. Marie Applewaite says it was okay. Not sleep inducing, says Jar9. I didn't even watch. I didn't even watch it now. Now I hear it's good. LOL. Derek Fleming Jr. It was sort of decent, says Ron C23. Above average, says Pile Driver. James from Fajitas is decent. Jar9 Gaming, average. Putting up the fucking biceps, Pile Driver finisher, man. The one time I don't watch it. That's funny. Saw the last two hours. It was eh, says uh, Sir Charles. Decent, says Eddie. Hey, this is a more positive review than you've gotten in a long time, especially for my unit. Oh, real quick. Oh, no. I got like I got like 2% battery, man. There were some super thankses in the last two podcasts. I was out in the world traveling, so you got straight audio format only. Straight up podcast format, I call that. Um, so I wasn't able to get to the super chats. Uh, super thanks is that's down below that thanks button that they add in for the regular uploads. So I wanted to give a big shout out real quick. Pile driver finisher, a two spot super thanks in yesterday's upload. Hey, BC, it's my birthday today. It's delayed pile driver finisher, but happy birthday, dude. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope, you know, the amp unit, um, is wishing you a happy birthday. Stegmeister threw up a five spot yesterday's podcast. Congrats to Trinity. Hopefully, Impact doesn't do her filthy like WWE did for 10 years. She was with the company. Well, listen, Stegmeister, thank you, brother. Um, she she got in seven matches more than WWE gave her in 10 years, bro. Think about that. So that's at least something. WWE AEW Marvel fan with a two spot. I'm really proud of Trinity. She deserved every moment of finally getting the respect that is long overdue. Um, I absolutely agree with that. Um, Ridge Holland needs to be careful. He keeps injuring his fellow superstars. Look what happened to Big E, Johnny Gargano. He nearly ended their careers. He's close to becoming the male version of Nia Jax. He injures most, man! <laughs> um, uh, WWE AEW Marvel fan. Yeah, Ridge Holland, he's, he's got to stop the belly to belly. It's no longer working, bro. It's jinxed. It's done. Appreciate the super thanks, super chat coffee. WWE AEW Marvel fan. Also, there was one from two podcasts ago from, uh, who was this? Jeffrey Ross, correct? Oh, man, I got to get it up on the big screen. I got 1% battery. Come on, man. Jeffrey Ross. Yes. Jeffrey Ross with a five-spot super thanks, super chat coffee. I haven't been around in a long time, but back now. Went to SmackDown last night, which was Friday, and that reaction that LA Knight got, so real. I was waiting for Asuka to come out in the first segment, as much as I love Bianca. The whole night was centered around Bianca and Charlie, which was stupid because the champion was forgotten about. Anyway, fully back. Red team, go! EST of WWE. Side note, Cameron Grimes got a louder reaction than I thought, but that could easily be because they were in North Carolina. Well, and he's super over Jeffrey Ross. He really is. Cameron Grimes debuted, and then they kept him off TV for three weeks. It doesn't make sense. But you had somebody catching lightning in a bottle like LA Knight, and they kept him off TV. Two Fridays ago in Madison Square Garden. You never know with this fucking, uh, with this company. So guys, if there's any super thanks that I missed, again, I was traveling. I will try to get all of them if I did miss any. Um, when we are no longer live. Hold on, let me go back to, what the fuck are we doing here? Hold on. 
Hold on, guys. Before I sign off, I, I think I saw a super chat pop up. No, 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 no. That was Derek, uh, Derek Fleming Jr. Yeah, time to play the lame. I got that one, man. It was Colin. That's who it is. Colin with a five spot. Impact Wrestling has been good with the women since 2007 when they started their knockout division. It started with Gail Kim versus Awesome Kong on Impact. No question. And I remember that. In fact, guys, Gail Kim held the title like seven times for over 700 days. And much respect to Deanna Perrazzo. Five different reigns over 500 days. So it looks to, to be that Trinity Fatu is in good hands. Impact Wrestling knows how to utilize their females. Colin, I agree, brother. Jack Brewer, two-spot check. You leader, BC. Red and gold unit. Peace. Jack Brewer, I appreciate you, brother. Check you. And we will do this again in the near in the near future. I can fucking speak. Um, I think I got everybody. Yes. Guys, we did it with 1% battery left. BC's gonna get out, I'm gonna recharge this motherfucker, I'm gonna recharge myself with a couple more coffees, and I'm gonna whoop the world's ass. Until next time, and there will be a next time. Top guy, I'm out. Top unit, and you're out. BC saying check you. Check you, peace!